Good evening and welcome to tonight's council meeting. Before we start the, uh, the meeting, I'd ask uh, Madam City Clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you. Ethics is a code of values which guide our choices and actions and determine the purpose and course of our lives. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Also, please note the next Common Council meeting is Wednesday, April 4th. For the benefit of the public and the aldermen, it'll be a Wednesday, I believe. So please make that notation. Call the 24th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Berg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Here. Groff. Excuse. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Here. Susha. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Verhasselt. Here. 15 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Kittleson, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. President Burke. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the minutes be approved as entered on the record. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There being none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Before I go into the next item, resignation, I wanted to express my gratitude and that of the city, and I, I, I feel that I have the Common Council support in the exceptional job that our fire department did today with the fire at the Landmark Apartments. The firefighters responded with a two-minute response time and contained the fire in such an incredible manner that it, no other buildings or homes were, were actually burned. The heat was so intense that it could have done some serious, serious damage, but they were ready, ready to go, well prepared. They responded just incredibly well. Our police department did also. They responded just incredibly well. They've done a great job. Transit provided the, um, the means for the evacuation of a lot of the senior citizens. We had the town of Sheboygan who assisted us. We had the Red Cross, the Salvation Army. We had citizens that were assisting. Folks, this is a great example of the good things that can happen, even in the midst of something terrible, the good things that can happen when people go work together and cooperatively. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Attorney McLean, resignation. I think the first one, Your Honor, is uh, from the Business Improvement District Board. Yes, you're on. Okay. Uh, indicating that they received a letter of resignation from Rob Hurry from the Business Improvement District Board. And that I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. And a letter from uh, Alderperson Bonnie Serta advising the mayor that she's resigning from the Industrial Development Commission and Housing Rehab Committee uh, due to change in her employment schedule. And I'd ask for a motion to accept and file, too. Move. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Did it? And, uh, uh, mayor's appointments. This is dated today's date uh, from the mayor. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Mary Morande to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Rob Hury, whose term expires 9-14-07, signed by the mayor. This will lie over, and I had promised that I would have a short bio of the appointments. We had asked for one, but my secretary's on vacation right now, so we're a little behind on that. But just as a brief introduction, she's a director for the Stephanie Wild Center. And she is very involved in the community and uh, just a, a great a public servant. But I will try to make an effort to bring some sort of bio for you. That lies over. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Proclamation for Andy Geeson. I would ask that Mr. Geeson please step forward.
Good evening, sir. Evening, Welcome Mayor. to the council meeting. I met Andy, Andy Geeson a few years back, and in particular had a very uh, good relationship uh, with Andy and uh, Alderman Hanna when we were both the president and vice president of the school board. And when I saw Andy, the first thing I thought is, where does he get all this energy from? I thought I had energy, but I think you already, you, you, you all do me. You've got a lot of energy, and he's got a big heart. He really cares about Sheboygan. The things that he's done have been remarkable. I would like to honor you, Andy, tonight for your incredible work that you've done for the Senior Center and express a heartfelt gratitude for all the public service that you've given to the beautiful city of Sheboygan. And I do have to put my glasses on. Call old age. Okay. Proclamation, whereas Andy Geeson has, has been greatly involved in the Sheboygan Senior Center, first as a participant and then as a member of the Commission on Aging, and whereas Andy has played an important role in the Commission of Aging as its chairperson for several years, and whereas Andy has offered direction and leadership and efforts to make the Senior Center inclusive to all, and whereas by his unselfish dedication and leadership, Andy has affected the lives of hundreds of people by ensuring that the Sheboygan Senior Center betters the lives of its participants by exploring new initiatives while maintaining its current programs. Therefore, I, Juan Perez, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby extend my personal thanks and congratulations and those of the entire city of Sheboygan to Andy Geeson upon his retirement from the city of Sheboygan Commission on the Aging. Andy, thank you very much for your hard work. Mayor Perez, <clears throat> Mayor Perez, members of the council, this is truly an honor. The recognition that I'm receiving from you tonight is really greatly appreciated. I think equally as well as the appreciation that I'm getting here tonight was working with the commission and the staff and all of the people associated with the senior center. This is one great organization and uh, as you mature, I heartily recommend that you become part of this senior center, not just as the council members, but certainly as participants within the community itself and the senior community. And we are now recognizing the fact that you only have to be 55 to get in there. I made that a couple of years ago, but it's really a pleasure. Again, thank you so kindly. I do cer certainly appreciate this. Before I sign off, I would like to have an introduction of my wife, Marge. Marge, would you please stand? Thank you all. Next item on the agenda is a presentation for Mr. Uh, Boris Frank, consultant hired by the Friends of the Senior Center. Mr. Frank, would you please come to the podium, sir? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity of addressing you today. My name is Boris Frank. Uh, for the past 25 years, I've been a consultant to not-for-profit government agencies in the area of planning, marketing, organizational development and fundraising. I teach courses in these areas for the University of Wisconsin, and from 1964 to 1982, I was on the faculty at the university, uh, serving on the staff of WHA-TV and Wisconsin Public TV. In April of 2006, I was retained by the Commission on Aging and the Friends of the Sheboygan Senior Center to review and analyze the Senior Center program an organizational structure and assist the center in determining its future direction. I've served as a consultant to a number of other senior centers, including those in Oshkosh, Monroe, Evansville, Watertown, Sun Prairie, and Madison. Following my final report to the Sheboygan Commission on Aging last month, they asked if I would present my candid observations and recommendations to you that I presented to them. And I must say, after hearing some of the things today, I feel a little bit like the polecat in the party. Uh, in my opinion, seniors are being underserved and undervalued in Sheboygan. Seniors are deserving of an improved and expanded 
Senior Center program. The current facility is inadequate, not configured to serve as a senior center. Because of limited staffing and financial support, the center is open only four days a week. I did research. I am not aware of another center in a comparable community that is not open at least five days a week. Staff is stretched thin and stressed out. Communities one-tenth the size of Sheboygan have better facilities and are open more hours. Watertown, a city half the size of Sheboygan, has a modern facility twice the size of Sheboygan's. Monroe, one quarter the size of Sheboygan, has a facility three times larger, including a new exercise facility specifically designed for seniors that has a waiting list for membership. Because services and facilities are so limited, Many seniors are not participating in center programs and activities, despite the best efforts of staff. It appears the city is not prepared or is unable to provide the resources required to fully offer comprehensive services to its older citizens. In fact, there are no signs in the city directing people to the center. Sheboygan seniors, I believe, deserve better. Almost 25% of Sheboygan residents are 55 or older. That's about 12,000 individuals. You have an aging population. The median age in 2000 was 36.8 years. It's projected to be 38.5 years by 2008. These are individuals who have spent their lives contributing to this community's economy, paid their taxes, participated in the political process, raised their families here, made Sheboygan what it is today. They do not deserve to be devalued at this point in their lives. Rather, they deserve to be rewarded for the commitment to their community, the investment they have made over the years. They deserve a return on that investment. I have made six recommendations to the commission. First, if the city cannot adequately operate and maintain a senior center, that it be spun off from the city and incorporated as an independent, not-for-profit organization. This will enable the Senior Center to conduct diverse fundraising in the broader community and, sub and not, subject, uh, not be subject to city restrictions and constraints. Secondly, the Friends of the Senior Center, I am proposing, become a support group for the new entity. Third, the new entity negotiate long-term financial support agreements with the city, the county, and neighboring townships. Next, a new state-of-the-art facility be pursued and outreach service locations explored. Next, partnerships with other community organizations such as the school system, medical community, private organizations serving seniors be forged, and finally, an operating endowment be created. I reiterate my opening statement. Seniors, I believe, are being underserved in the community. I urge you to either provide them with sufficient resources and services or set them free with adequate transitional support to pursue creation of a center that they deserve and have earned. I thank you very much for your attention and your time. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Public Forum, Madam City Clerk. Um, first on the list would be Henry Capitello. And can I get your home address, please? Yes, that's 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. And I am here representing Home Inc. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Some of this council's changes and proposed changes, like the moving of the police mechanic to the pol public works building and the proposed moving of the community policing positions to the Sh Sheboygan Transit, are just not sound decisions and have no foundation of common sense. It is understandable if in some changes you would be dramatically saving tax dollars, making things more efficient, or even making things run smoother, then you could justify such changes. 
But in these cases, that is not the situation. For example, the present policing component of the Sheboygan Police Department collects enough revenue to pay for the officer's wages, benefits, and in fact, even generates additional revenue for the police department. Why would you want to change something that is presently working extremely well? Apparently, this administration is fixated on continuously trying to disrupt and dismantle the operations of the Sheboygan Police Department. That motivation, what motivation would this administration have to undertake these types of changes? It should be apparent to anyone with any ounce of common sense that these changes are proposed changes that bear no logic or common sense whatsoever. It has always been my belief that the reason that this administration is so intent on disrupting the police department is because they would like to see a whole new policing entity within the city of Sheboygan. Apparently, the present police department is not what the administration wants to see in this community. What is this administration's vision of policing in this community is without a doubt going to look like this. A police department with fewer officers within the department. A police department that will be so stretched that officers will, and supervisors will have to choose what they can realistically do while on duty. A police department with a dramatically smaller budget but increased overall responsibilities. A police department where officers will have to choose to do more and not get paid or just do what is humanly possible within their shift. A police department that will not be able to keep good officers and or attract good candidates for openings within the department. A police department where officers will have to be forced to choose on what calls they will have to respond because every year the number of calls for the police department are increasing. A police department that cannot speak out because this administration cannot take any kind of constructive criticism uh, regarding its policies. A police department whose moral Morale is strained because the police officers' perception that they are not appreciated or respected. A police department whose administration will be expected to be subservient to the office of the mayor. Do not be swayed by this administration's statement that they are not anti-police because they are going to be building the police department a new facility and that this council and mayor made it possible to build a new facility. If you recall, the previous administration approved the building building a new police department facility at the Sheridan Park location that was projected to cost $17 million. What this administration did was rescind that project, that resolution, as soon as it took office and over time slashed the budget. In fact, this administration convinced some older persons to support the 23rd Street site by saying that they would support a budget of $13 million for the facility and then switch and supported a dollar figure of $9 million for this facility. This mayor is the same person who, as a school board president, supported a $30 million referendum to build state-of-the-art gymnasiums for high schools plus other construction. This is also the same mayor who ran, who, who a year ago, told the citizens of the city of Sheboygan that their tax bills would be higher solely because of the spending levels of the Sheboygan Public School District, Lakeshore Technical College, and Sheboygan County. I ask, I ask this council to look at what effect the toll of their actions will take on the police department, police officers, police morale, and overall policing within the city of Sheboygan. You cannot say I support the police department on one hand and in turn create irreparable harm to its existence. That is like an abusive husband who says, I love my wife, but every chance he gets, he abuses her. You cannot keep abusing the police department and expect it not to make a difference in its well-being. Some of you may say, well, Sheboygan is ranked high as a safe place to live. Why do you think this is so? I can tell you with, without a doubt it is because of the police officers and their leadership that this, has made, that this has made the city of Sheboygan a safe place to live and is not just a coincidence. When making decisions that will dramatically affect the city... Excuse me, Henry. One more minute, do you need? Yes. Okay. When making decisions that will dramatically affect any city department, please make sure that you allow true involvement and input from department heads and not just lip service. And if you do not hear what you want to hear from the different department heads, do not make it difficult for them to voice their views just because you have the power to make their jobs that much more difficult. 
The sign of a good and wise leader is that he or she can accept constructive criticism and can incorporate it incorporated into their decision-making process. Be good leaders and strong council members. Look at everything before you make your final decision. Thank you very much for this time. Thank you. And finally, Milt Storm. And can you give me your home address, please? Yes, I live at 1736 Marvin Court, and I've lived there for 20, 41 years and always try to pay my taxes. <laughs> okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you, Mayor, Sue, and Council members. It has been about eight or nine months since the last time I addressed this Common Council. I learned from my parents how to educate myself that if I have a dispute with people, you go talk to them face to face. If that fails, then you take some of friends you're with you, and then you again talk to these non-believers face to face. If that fails, then the ultimate choice is to make a public spectacle of these people, as they do of me. It is my version of my golden rule. Since I am quite outspoken this evening, I may bypass rule number one and two and go directly to number three. These council meetings, along with their committee meetings, are not soap opera operas that are designed to titillate or entertain. They are not games or sporting events where you, one keeps a running score to see who wins and who loses. Rather, these hearings are honest debates to decide what is the best interest of all citizens of our city, not just the special few be they the rich and powerful or the weak and the poor. According to some liberal thinkers, they only see some of us as people bashers. I'd like to read an editorial in Sunday's opinion page. And this just indicates how nasty I am. Let's stop all the people bashing. After reading many of Mr. Storm's letters to the editor, I sensing a lot of anger. Mr. Storm should examine his own thinking and mine. Instead of always bashing and nitpicking, he should work together and talk with the people. It always seems that if things don't go his way, it's always wrong. If we are to return our city to togetherness, Mr. Storm often talks about, we should all stop starting trouble and quit running down and hating people. It seems to me that in my honest opinion, some new older persons on this common council need to show a little more courtesy and wisdom especially some who make unwarranted comparisons between Sheboygan and other cities of larger or smaller populace. This left-wing liberals, as I turn them, just don't cut the mustard with me. Sorry, I can't meet them in a vegetable department of a grocery store. Maybe a bowling alley would be more appropriate. The city of Kenosha has a population of probably 91,000 feet of people. Neighboring Racine is approximately 82,000. I believe it is the city of Kenosha that is asking taxpayers to furnish them with 205 police officers. Using that percentage, then the Sheboygan could ask for at least 125 and 130 police officers to handle crime and illegal drugs and assist the fire department when a tragedy occurs like the, leaving the landmark squares. Pardon my German background, but my truthful and honest letters to the Sheboygan depressed, I can only imagine my letters keep the local gazette in the black. I'm sorry if that offends some liberals who think I am a Sheboygan's number one people blasher. I carry a card with me, and I'm sorry I forgot to bring it along this morning. It is addressed to me and only has my son's name on the return address. April 15, 2001, income tax day, four months after December 15, 2001, the resurrection of my son occurred. I was at a gas station at 21st and Indiana Avenue looking for blunts and some drug paraphernalia if I could find them. When a man came running into the gas station and asked for a gas can like he could use because he had run out of gas down the road a ways. The attendants paid no attention. I asked him to step outside with me and I would take care of his problem. I told him, first of all, you need a red can, and possibly our wonderful common council has some ordinance frowning on carrying the wrong colored can down the streets. I suggested that we go to my house a few blocks away and get my red can, and I use my lawnmower for my lawnmower. I introduced myself to him, told him of my son's passing, and explained to him that if you give love away, it generally comes back to you. 
he said, Amen, threefold. I knew at that time I had a Christian on my hands. We, he filled his gas can in his blue Chevrolet pickup truck, and after numerous tries, got it started, and insisted that I come back to the gas station and refill my gas can again. As we departed, I asked again what his name was, and he said, Jeff, see you around. I must say, my Jeff's spirit moves miraculously. The next day, I received a card in the mail, and I have to use my memory. It was a thank you card worth more than gold, and it said, thank you, Milton, for your help. God bless. And he thanked me threefold. His wife and his two sons also thanked me. If anyone is so stupid in thinking that I'm bashing the good people of Sheboygan, better research their minds. If you want to bash anyone, then bash the Sheboygan Press on their editorial page. Not our excellent police department, WHBL Radio, or yours truly. Thank you for listening, and you all have a good evening. Thank you, sir, and you did it exactly in five minutes. That's all. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. We have one hearing tonight for the vacation and discontinuance of a part of South Commerce Street bounded, bound on the north by Illinois Avenue and on the south by an unimproved 18-foot wide east-west alley. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Please, ma'am. And can I have your name, please? Sarah Seitz. Sarah, and how do you spell your last name, Sarah? S-E-I-T-Z. And your address, Sarah? 715A Kentucky Avenue. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I would just like to comment that uh, I disagree with the vocation of Commerce Street. Um, first reason, our parking in the area is already limited. I've been managing Dave Susan for three years now, so we do tend to see the traffic we get in on a weekly basis. I believe this is causing undue stress on our business, um, area businesses, and other customers. I completely support the development in the area, but no, hopefully this will bring more customers to the area on an already stressed parking situation. In search of solutions, I've been told there's private parking in use and that Highland House Restaurant plans to be neighborly. These are not solutions. The owners at any time may discontinue their parking um, for public use. I believe a parking survey would prove that parking is already an issue. One has not been done in quite a while. I believe that the best course of action would be to complete a parking survey before the vocation of Commerce Street. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Sir, please step up. Can I have your name, sir? Sure. Uh, Miroslav Anich. I go by Mick, mm -hmm. 315 Ridgeway Street, Kohler, Wisconsin. Thank you. Go ahead. And uh, I guess I'm here speaking uh, in favor of the vacation of Commerce Street. Um, I've spoken to uh, Sarah Seitz, um, Mr. Rapinski, and his colleague Henry, who's sitting in the back. We had a few adult beverages and spoke about this one evening. I think we can respectfully disagree about it, uh, but uh, I've spoken also to uh, uh, Mr. Schmidt and, uh, and the DeMaster brothers about their development, um, meaning the uh, Highland House restaurant. We're all very interested in making that intersection one of the premier intersections for entertainment, for food, and for conviviality. Parking is an important part of that. What I'm proposing for the J.J. Kepsel building, the former J.J. Kepsel building, will provide new parking that doesn't exist now. I think what the Highland House is doing has done the same. If anything, I think the neighborhood has been enhanced by what we are uh, proposing, not just from a quality standpoint, but also from a parking standpoint. If I recall Mr. Rapinski, and Ms. Seitz uh, control other properties near their tavern, which could be developed into parking, and for whatever reason have chosen not to, I guess. 
Uh, I think there are plenty of uh, parking alternatives there, and I really don't see where parking survey uh, is justified. We're ready, my group is ready to start construction. We've selected our architect, we're ready to roll. The final piece before the green light goes on is this vacation. It's an important part of our process and our project. It pulls together two sites <coughs> that I purchased, and my company purchased, brings them together into one, and allows for a more uh, continuous and rational development of that area. And I think everyone in the city will be very pleased with what we have in mind. So uh, I encourage you not to introduce any artificial delays because Dave's who's in would like to have some free parking. Uh, I think they have plenty of parking. Uh, I think we will provide more. I think their customers will be free to park wherever they wish. I'm not aware of anybody wishing to uh, stand in the way of where people park. And we would like your help to make that intersection the exciting intersection in Sheboygan to come and enjoy our culture, our food, and our wine, and our beer, especially our beer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Sir, please step up. And can I have your name, sir? Henry Thompson. T H O M P. Yes, and Henry, what is your home address? 919 Custer Avenue. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead. Okay. Um, I am currently the weekend bar manager at Dave Suzanne, and we've noticed that since we've lost the parking directly across the street from us where the Highland House is being built, we've lost about roughly 35% of our weekend business because of a lack of parking. Um, which is huge when you think about it. Um, a year ago, on a Friday night, we would be packed. Um, as of last Friday night, we probably had roughly about 250 people come through the bar, which you would think is a lot, but that's nothing in comparison to last year. Um, we desperately need a parking survey done just so that we can prove that the need is there between the residences and the businesses in the area, there is no, there's, there's no parking. I mean, there's not enough parking to sustain everything. And until this is addressed, there's gonna be a huge issue. That's it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Sir, please step forward. <clears throat> And can I have your name, sir? Brandon Siebers. I'm sorry? Brandon Siebers. Brian? Brandon. Uh, spell it for me. B-R-A-N-D-O-N. And the last name? S-E-I-B-E-R-S. -E and Br Brandon, where do you live? 817 George Avenue. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'm a resident. Um, I go to Dave's quite often. There's many times that my wife and I had to park back at the house. Um, we drive around the block waiting on a parking spot. There is no parking. When we did have the parking cross street, it was easy to get in. Um, some nights it's just too cold to walk, so we just stay home and wouldn't be able to visit the restaurant. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Sir, please step up. Can I get your name, please, sir? David Rapinski. And your home address? 835 Indiana Avenue. That's my mailing address. All of those are my addresses. <laughs> okay, thank you. Go ahead. I just want to thank everybody that's here very much, so it's enjoyable watching you sometimes. It's, it's very good. Let's thank uh, Brandon for coming up here. That's, uh, I'd like to, I would like to ask him a question. By the way, thanks, Brandon. If it's, if it's possible. I'll no, take public up. hearing just to address the council. Um, David, excuse me. Could you pull the mic up a little bit? I think people are having a hard time hearing. There you go. There you go. 
All right. Um, tonight, I'm going to ask you to vote no on vacating Commerce Street. Now, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Now, this is something that's been going on for quite some time, and not with, not with Mick. Mick is a wonderful person. I'm glad he wants to invest money in Sheboygan. This is the greatest city in the. This is the greatest city in the world. And uh, I'm glad there's ways to make this work, but I'm going to tell you why this particularly can't work right now. We already lost 27 stalls on Indiana Avenue with the Rotary Project. We lost 40 stalls with the Highland House. We lost 35 stalls with the angle parking with rolling curbs on 9th Street from the south tip of Kepsel Building to the river. Now what they did is, as a street, they did not vacate the street, they vacated the parking on the street. So instead of giving a, a proper, maybe I won't say proper, but instead of giving an informative meeting where everybody like me would, like everybody like me would hear about it, they did it this way. And I want to show everybody this. May I? It's, what? it's, it's your RO Just and the- hand it to an alderman, they'll, they'll pass it around. Now, when I give 35 stalls on the east side of the Kepsel Building, which is 9th Street, I'm giving a very conservative figure. There's 270 feet there. 270 feet on angle parking. If you give them 10 feet, that's 27 cars per side. But I'll say 35 cars because something always comes in play. Handicap parking, spaces in between there. I'm just saying if we delete some of that. So I'm going to go over that again. We lost 27 stalls on Indiana Avenue because of the Rotary Project. We lost 40 stalls with the Highland House, and I'm glad the Highland House is there. Don't say, I'm just talking about parking strictly. I'm glad these people are investing. There's 35 stalls, angle parking with the rolling curbs on 9th Street from the south tip of Kepsel to the river. I just wanted to repeat that so that everybody knows now that you see it. And if anybody needs a map, I do have a map here, but I only brought one thinking that a lot of you guys are familiar with this. But I have gotten a few calls back that's not so familiar, and I didn't get a chance to copy this side of it. So if anybody would like to see it, maybe I'll pass that around also. Now... What's left on Indiana Avenue from 9th to 10th is 20 stalls for all of these businesses, and I please want you to hear all of these businesses. There's Auto Electric, there's a Warehouse, the Nailery, Dave's Who's In, Shipwreck, Endzone, Pool Tavern, the Carpet Store, the Insurance Company, Cots Gas Station, Green Room, Computer Store, Ziggy's, Ziggy's Tavern. Uh, there's a salon. I'm not quite sure what that one is. It looks kind of new, but it is a building. It, it is another business that's in that area. There's 19 apartments, residences within this. Then there's two rooming houses. One holds three, and one holds, I believe, 14. And uh, all of these people are going to have to park within 20 stalls on Indiana Avenue. Now, I don't see how the businesses can survive, and I don't see how the residences are going to handle this. There are five bars in this one corner. There's mine, there's Shipwreck, a beautiful bar. If you guys have been in there, it's marble. It just looks great from one end to the other. There's now the Green Room, another beautiful bar. If you guys knew it when Cleo had it or when it was uh, Mike's, when it was uh, Cops and Robbers, he did a lot of work to it, and these guys just did a phenomenal job. And uh, there's also another tavern that a lot of you people don't remember, and that's the Pool Tavern. She runs the rooming house, but she keeps an active license. Now that we're having other businesses come in there, other business, other investors, people, whatever, are going to want to come into this area to make these places, bring these places up to code and get people in them. And uh, they're all going to need parking. There's also the end zone, a small place but a fun place. I, I mean, they have a little bit of limited parking behind them, but if all of the proposed stuff goes through with this plan, they will be losing the parking behind them because I got a feeling... I got a feeling the engineers are going to pressure the railroad to clean that up back there, which could, they could lose that alley back there. Now, the alley's been back there as a dirt road probably for 150 years. They used to always have, I'm only speculating, but they always used to have the roads next to the railroads where originally they were cart paths next to the roads and it just became cars and it's still there from all of that time ago. But it would be considered nonconforming. So of the places like Endzone, um, the carpet store, 
And uh, it used to be called Smiling's Restaurant. Now it's an insurance company. They would lose that parking behind it. And there's even a couple of garages back there that would be considered nonconforming at that time. And uh, anyway, now just getting back to the bar situation here, being five bars in that one area, me, Shipwreck, end zone, green room, <clears throat> uh, we'll say possible pool tavern. Then we're adding the Highland House to it. I hold 550 people. Now, Mick is right. I want parking. And he says, I'm not tearing all my buildings down. I got one building on to wait till February because I promised the man that I would wait until, when I bought it from him, that I would wait until next February to tear it down. And I drew up all of the plans to have this done at that time. I had uh, Norm Minster to draw up the plans the way I'm going to tear down the buildings now to create parking. And when I take that building out to create more parking for myself, I have always created parking for myself. Across the street where the Highland House is now, I tore down all the foundations, filled them in, graveled it, plowed it, paid the insurance on it, plowed it continually. I did. I got $250 once from Mike from Cops and Robbers once because he had a bunch of uh, um, uh, brought fries all in a row. He felt guilty and he gave me $250 towards it. That was great. That is all I got in about 15 years. Okay, when you said he took it over, he just took it from me. I was always ready for that. I provide my own parking. But there's possibility of a 1,000 people being in that area. How many people does Highland House hold? Does anybody really know? I'll guess 300. I think it's conservative. Maybe it could be 350. Might be more. Mixed place is going to hold, boy, that place could hold a 1,000 people itself. But the way he set it up, he says, no. Mick, 300? You don't have to answer. Anyway, it's possible that that could be 300 people. So that puts us uh, 55 for end zone. We'll say 80 for CJ's, 200 for green room. Well, I shouldn't say it. Maybe 125 for green room. Um, 500 for mine. We'll even go to four of a kind. I'll say give it a conservative figure of 125. Still puts up around 1,100 people, and that's without his. They'll all be trying, all be trying to find parking. Um, now... All of this is going to have to survive on the 20 stalls that are left on Indiana Avenue, plus the people that live there. Imagine it during a snow emergency. Okay. And as a city, we're not supposed to give up our parking. We're supposed to keep our parking, make a TIF district. I don't care if there's, you tell them they have, need 60 stalls, you've got 50 in the area, you're charging for 10 up on the hill. We've done that forever with our TIF district down at the river and uh, charging them up here. That's the way it works. Granted, I have providing my own, but I still have other people parking in my lot of the other taverns that are there that need this parking that is here. Now, I have some pictures just thinking of this because one of our aldermen today asked me about this. So what I, did is I took, what I did is I took some pictures that I had taken this last weekend, and then I had taken some pictures today. And I'll pass these around. You can see how the cars are here, the cars um, all the way along the capsule building. And uh, you might get a better layout of the land. Now, tonight, it's a permanent thing. When you guys vote tonight, it's done. From here on, what do we do? we got to survive. There is all of those businesses that are there. I mean, let me say it again. There's Auto Electric, a warehouse, Nailery, Dave's, who's in Shipwreck, End Zone, Pool Tavern, Carpet Store, Insurance Company, Cots Gas Station, Green Room, a computer store, Ziggy's, a salon I'm not sure of, 19 apartments, four houses, two rooming houses, a three and 14 rooms per now, I know I'm repeating myself, but I want to make sure you guys know that when this is done, it's permanent. I've been on this. I've been in this location. I bought it in December of 88. I've been there ever since. I had one over here on 7th and Penn. They claimed eminent domain on me. They put a $5 million building on it. Look, beautiful. I had a business then that we were building. My dad bought it in the early 70s. I bought him, bought him out in 86, and uh, all of that stuff started happening, we'll say, 87. And it didn't take a whole lot longer after that that company did go bankrupt. So I'm not saying Mick has probably got a deeper pockets than all of us put together. But I'm just saying what happened there, because that guy did have deep pockets. His shares went from 30-some dollars down to $3 before I think he got out of it. But I'm just saying how this stuff goes. And we always need parking for the businesses that are there. I have survived there forever. So since there is no parking study, a solution still could be made with giving back 9th Street getting back to parking on 9th Street from the southern tip of Kepsel north to the river. Now, that is a street. It, they just vacated the parking on it. Um, it. It is still city domain, city right-of-way. It was this running curb end-to-end. -end. We could put angle parking on it again. Now, granted, Mick would lose one side of this, 
but he would have the whole other side of it. The only problem with now is doing it tonight. This is a permanent thing. If we decide to say, okay, we'll do that other thing, you know, with 9th Street, and then later just change your minds, that's where our problem comes in. It, it can be debated on forever and never get done. And I really hope that it's just all you have to do is table this for a little bit and get this taken care of. I guess there's one other thing we could do is uh, along the railroad tracks on the south side of mixed land, if he wants to make a trade where that railroad is, he's up to trying to vacate that uh, railroad, the tracks that are there, which is a really good idea, but they renewed their contract, I believe, in 98, possibly 99 on another 100-year contract, so on another 100-year lease. So the railroad is not really keen on giving that up. I don't see Kohler letting it go very easily because it could be a possible thing from his place up to Blue Harbor. I think it's, there's a lot of things that could work for us in that area with those tracks. But I'm just trying to come up with another solution. The two solutions that I can only see are either making 9th Street angle parking again, and if we would have doggone talked about this, if I'd have seen the proper notice on this, Paulette, we'd have had this argument a long time ago. And me and you have gone around and around with parking. I know you smile at me like that, but I really wish, because we wouldn't be here now. The, the thing would have been settled. Mick would have been building tomorrow. He's got his doggone uh, end loader thing sitting there ready to go. I mean, I'd like to see him work there. Doggone, it brings more people in by me. But I'm just saying, today's decision is permanent. It's permanent. You're going to make all of these businesses, all of these residences, survive on 20 stalls. You can say he's got parking. You can say Four of Kinds got a couple of parking places. You can say Highland House has got parking places. You can say, um, you can say whoever left there has got parking. Doggone, I work out as much as I can with Koch to keep that thing clear, and I got kids throwing wrappers down all over the place, but I'll do whatever it takes for parking. I just want you to remind there was no study done. There was a doggone study done on this. We'd have had this figured out. Now, we went back 15 years, couldn't find a study. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah. As far as, as far as that we could find, there was no study done in the last 15 years. And if it would have been done, all of these solutions, we wouldn't have to be here. But unfortunately, we are. This is a tough decision. And I am really sorry because I do love Mick. He's, an, he's one hell of, I think he's honest. I think he's straightforward. But today is a permanent, permanent thing here and you're going to make us all survive on 20 stalls and uh, I'm going to have 27 stalls of the buildings I'm tearing down. Boy, if I told you how much I got into mine, you'd tell me I was crazy. My dad tells it to me every week when I tell him. I, I just don't know what to say, but I've survived as a business this long and I've done it well and uh, I've done it because I've made a lot of good moves. Some were lucky moves, other were smart moves. But just want to remind you, there's 20 stalls left there. There's no parking study. There is solutions that can be done in a matter of a week. We can be back here, special meeting, whatever it takes. Heck, doggone, you stay here an hour after the thing here and get it hashed out. We're all here. Um, and it could be taken care of, signed, voted on then. But I'm just saying, this is permanent. You're going to make us survive. I already had to survive moving once, and I did a good job. Did a great job. I'm just saying, this doesn't have to be necessary because there are solutions to it. I'm just making sure. Now, I went over the thing with down by the river, how they created a TIF district. They charge people for all the parking. A city should not give up its parking. They never should. You want to make trades with businesses? Fine. And I can see where that road comes right down the middle of all he owns. There's still a solution to it. I think I've all covered everything. I uh, just want to remind you, you know, there was not a parking study done on this, and I really wish there would have been. And uh, there is a lot we've already given up, 27 stalls on Indiana Avenue, 40 stalls with the Highland House, and I love the Highland House. It's just bringing a level of excitement to my area. We're going to lose another guessing on this where you're vacating the street. I give it a, a conservative 35, actually it's probably closer to 50 or 60 stalls, but we'll say 30, 35 stalls that are possible to use just to say. You've already taken off of 9th Street another 30 stalls, 35 stalls. I mean, there's 270 feet on both sides of that. You can do the math yourself. It's 10 feet per angle parking. Um, just remember, when you guys make this decision tonight, it is permanent for us. I mean, I wouldn't know how to change your minds other than that because once it's done, we'd have to survive. And you take 
You take Cinco de Mayo, there could be a hundred, I mean a thousand people in the area, just on a simple thing. Take a dozen other, take a dozen other holidays or bar get together. Valentine's Day. Heck, everybody takes a woman out on Valentine's Day. Highland House is going to be a great restaurant to go to. Mixed Place will be a good restaurant to go to. Let's just do the thing smart. I've been here surviving all these years, done a good job. I'm not saying I'll survive. I'll survive. I will. But we have to make the correct decision. We really do. This is a permanent thing today. There's a, a lot of businesses depending on what this decision comes down to today. <clears throat> Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? President Berg? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the hearings be closed. Second. Motion second to close hearing. Under discussion? Alderman Boren? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I was wondering if we could uh, hear from Paulette, Paulette Enders on this and also uh, I'm wondering if there's any possibility of getting the interested parties together on this and maybe report back to the council in a couple of weeks. I know it's been delayed and delayed, but maybe the parties could meet and could meet and maybe come up with some solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Alan Warren. Paulette, should you please step forward, please. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Um, I don't think I can say it as well as Mr. Annick said it, but with any of the projects that are occurring, time is of the essence. Um, having, and I'll just give you a little bit of history on that site, on, the, on a couple sites in that area. The first one is the 8th and Indiana site that at one time was used for parking, and it was leased by Mr. Rapinski. When we were looking to develop that site, we sent out a request for proposals to everyone, anyone that had showed any interest in that site. Um, we received two proposals back. Um, one was from a developer out of Milwaukee, and then the other was the Schmidt Group that ended up um, getting that site and developing the Highland House. And they are developing parking for that business as well as for other businesses in the area. They've said... Um, that they want to be good neighbors and that they want to make sure that, you know, everybody works together. So they've, they've, added, they've actually added parking. Um, the work that we did on 9th Street and on Commerce Street didn't actually take away parking. Probably, you know, through the way that we re reconfigured it, Tom Holton has always said that we've probably added a couple spots, not taken away. Um, Mr. Annex development will be adding parking for his development and he he stood up here and told you he also wants to work with the businesses in that area um, there's a municipal parking lot on the rotary on 8th street that at any given point you can drive past that lot and it's underutilized so that lot is available um, you know and i know i uh, mr rapinski was saying that i smiled at him only because a couple weeks ago he told me 2006 was his best year ever. And he's anticipating that 2007 will be even better. Um, we've worked with uh, nationally recognized municipal planners on that area and um, through both our comprehensive plan and the Harbor Center Master Plan Phase 3, they've identified the exact redevelopment that Mr. Annick is proposing. And I fully support the project and I hope that we can move forward. Thank you, Paul. I just hold on. I've got two aldermen. Does any alderman Susha? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to clarify one thing that you said, which was that Mr. Rapinski was renting the space across the street where Highland House is going up. He was renting that from the city. The city always owned that property, and he was renting that. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then when you when you notified him that the lease was going to be um, terminated, at that point in time, did you let him know that it was going out uh, to be developed? When um, we sent out the RFPs, he, the request for proposal, he received one, and we did not get a response back. So he had the opportunity to purchase that for additional parking, and yes. he chose not to do that. Um, I disagree with some of the numbers Mr. Rapinski gave, saying that there's only 20 spots available to him. Um, for example, I'm wondering if you could elaborate in regards to the land that the railroad owns behind the boarding house. I did speak to one of those owners, and it's my understanding that she rents land from the railroad. Yes. Is that accurate? That's accurate. And there's an, there's an alley, but uh, Mr. Rupinski was correct that it's, 
it's in a, it's in a, you know, it's actually in the wrong location in a way where you could almost take the railroad property and flip it with that alley um, and provide better access. And we've been working on that, but um, working with the railroad is difficult at best, but we have been pursuing that. Okay, thank you. And I just, I want to emphasize too that I think that the council has led Mr. Anik on for a long enough period of time. He's helping tremendously with implementing the master plan. I want all the citizens to know that one of the things he's talking about doing with that building is to bring in some type of a grocery store or, or individual shops that will facilitate that need periodically. I get calls because that's my district. I think this is going to be a big asset to that area of Sheboygan, and I would ask that we move forward on this tonight. Thank you. Please, please hold on. Hold on, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are, are we going to be, uh, we have the resolution uh, farther on in the agenda. Are we going to pull this forward or? It, it could be done. Okay. Right now we're I, I mean, are we going to discuss right this all right now? Are we going to close the hearing or not? Okay. Um, I think Mr. Ripinski has some, some valid concerns. Uh, however, um, yeah, we can't stop progress. Uh, Mr. Anik does have a Could lot we, of... Could we, Ryan, that is a... We need discussion on whether to close the hearing or not. That would probably be more pertinent when the resolution okay. comes I'm, I mean, I'm following uh, Alderman Susha's oh, example right. here, and that's why I asked that question before I spoke. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can wait, Your Honor, until we, uh, it would until we come better. up with the resolution. Be that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for understanding. Alderman Radke? Thank you, Your Honor. I was going to ask for a point of order. We're discussing the hearing closing, not the discussion of the resolution, so I don't see any further discussion here with Thank you, Alderman Reck, and we'll, we'll move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Byron, for understanding. Alderman Bourne? Uh, I'll wait, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. President Burke? Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. The thank hearing, I would move to close the hearing and pull forward uh, number 2146. The motion has already been made to close hearing. It's under discussion. We need to take a vote. Is there any further discussion on whether or not to close the, the hearing? There is none. All those in favor of closing hearing, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> President Burke. Yes, and now I'd like to pull forward number 2146, uh, which deals with the matter previously under discussion of the matter of the hearing. Motion and second to pull forward 21, I'm sorry, 26? 2146. 2146. And the matter is laid over on page, page 11. Page 11. Matter is laid over 11, page 11, 2146, and our 480 by City Plan Commission recommending vacation of the portion of the South Commerce Street bound by the north, bound on the north by Illinois Avenue and on the south by an unimproved 18 foot wide east west alley. And there, you made a motion and second. Well, you're, going to need, you're going to need to make a motion now? I did make a motion, correct. To pull it forward? Uh, to pull it forward. It's pulled forward. Now, do you want to make a motion with respect to anything? I, and then I would uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion to put resolution upon its passage under the uh, second? Second, Order. under discussion. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, like I, I was briefly discussing, um, Mr. Rapinski does have some very valid concerns, and I do believe that the city needs to look into the parking situation in that area. Um, that is an area where parking is, is at a premium, to say the least. However, there are many areas of Indiana Avenue that are uh, underutilized at the moment. Uh, the railroad spur runs all the way through uh, parallel to Indiana Avenue, uh, even though you know, getting a hold of the railroad uh, to get them to respond and actually take some action on it could take up to a year. And from what I understand, uh, that property they will not sell. However, they will lease it uh, with the right to put their tracks back through at one point, but uh, it would be suitable for a parking lot. And I, I do believe the city actually needs to look into that. They need, we need to uh, do a study if we, if we have to. Um, figure out what we need for parking. When the Highland House opens, they will have a lot of parking stalls. Uh, Mr. Annick's place, again, but we want to draw people into the area. The, 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 the businesses that are there right now without being able to park at the Highland House, uh, there's not enough parking. We need to look into this, and I believe uh, we owe it to Mr. Rapinski to do so. But in the uh, same, uh, same uh, concern, uh, Mr. Annick uh, has a great... Uh, uh, development coming up here. Be good for the city. We can't stop progress. We have to move forward. I do, uh, uh, myself, uh, I would like to uh, uh, ensure Mr. Rapinski that we will, as a council, look into the parking situation. 
and uh, we will remedy it if necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I also will support moving forward with this. There was, as a member of the Plan Commission, at that commission, there was lots of discussion in depth, and it passed unanimously at the Plan Commission. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could ask Paulette a couple more questions, please. Under discussion, Paulette. Uh, Paulette, uh, how many stalls will the uh, Highland House be creating it for itself? Oh, I, I don't know the exact number, but what they did was they, they absolutely maximized that site. Uh, but I can't tell you what the exact number is. <laughs> And uh, do you know how many Mr. Anik is going to be providing for his business? I don't, but Mr. Anik may know. Okay, and then before we get that answer, uh, one of the suggestions was to make angle parking on 9th Street. Uh, what would be the problem with the city considering that? Um, I think the issue with 9th Street is that um, Mr. Rapinski is talking about opening an area that wasn't vacated, but it's now a dedicated pedestrian mall. Mm -hmm. And it's between, um, the, the, it's the length of the capsule building mm -hmm. from where commerce would have dead-ended to the riverfront. And it's been fully developed for a pedestrian mall, and that, that isn't anything I would recommend. Okay. Is it, is it possible, along with that pedestrian part, to put parking in there, or it's just not practical? It's, it's now, um, you know, with the action that the Common Council took, we no longer you know, allow any any type of um, automobiles in that area other than for emergency purposes or maintenance. Okay, and then if I could get that answer from Mr. Annick. Hold on, hold on. If we're going to ask a non-director, we need a motion to open up the floor. Second. Motion to second up the floor to Mr. Annick. Is there any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Anik, please step forward, sir. Hello well, again. Yeah. Uh, this is easy. I don't know. Uh, I'm waiting for the green light to go hire the architect to do that sort of planning. And uh, the best estimate I can give you is what's included in the... Uh, Phase three Harbor Center plan put together by Vandewall and Associates. You can see that the very site that is part of my purchase is all dedicated for parking. That's my intent as well. That Commerce Street is vacated in that plan, which is what we're asking for here today. Nothing we're asking for here is inconsistent with the Phase three Harbor Center plan, which has already been approved, already been commented upon, and already digested by the entire city, and I believe strongly supported by the city and this council. So uh, nothing that's happening here is any different, but I can't give you an exact number or even an approximate number at this point. We need the architects to do their work. But if you refer back to the uh, uh, phase three plan put together by Vandewall and Associates, you'll get a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Just wanted to, uh, you're done. Thank you. Uh, or Alderman Manny? Is, okay. Just wanted to make a comment here. Um, Paulette is a very capable, thinking ahead type of person. She didn't make this decision by herself. We've got very competent, nationally known consultants. We've got issues that need to be dealt with tonight. The parking problem is not unique to Indiana Avenue. We've dealt with issues on A Street and Bethesda just recently. The way it came across is there's a parking problem the city should provide, but on the other hand, it's a business decision people make when they have their place. Now, when, when, uh, when that lot was being parked, was being rented, uh, where the Highland House is going now, I cannot tell you how many times the police was called over there because there was problems that they weren't allowed to park there unless they were at Dave Who's In. So that parking was already restricted. It wasn't shared. It was already restricted, and we've had several issues where people almost wanted to fight. Is there a parking problem? Possibly. Is there parking available? Yes, there is. Has this 
plan been f uh, carefully thought out? Absolutely. I think the council needs to be uh, assertive and, and move forward and follow the recommendations of city development and our consultants. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first, I'd like to apologize to the business owners in this area and the new developer coming in. Um, it just goes back to, I guess I have some questions for Paulette, and if she could put me at ease, because I don't think this is an issue that we're not for pro-developing these areas, these blighted areas. Um, I have some questions. If she could just share with me, what criteria does the city look at when you have new developers coming in and being considerate to the older businesses that have been with us and been um, in good standing? Um, if Maybe if those questions could be addressed, some of the, the existing businesses that are there, how the parking um, issue is going to be addressed. And, Your Honor, you had just said, is there a possibility that there's a parking um, problem down there? Even the question that it might be possible might um, just validate that we might have to have a parking study down there. So if Paulette could just address the criteria that they look at, taking into consideration the existing businesses, and I guess my biggest fear is that we're going to shift the burden on to um, the business owners to be a good neighbor to provide the parking for the existing businesses down there. And I'm afraid that we might pin one business against another, and I really want to prevent that, and I want to keep their relationship in good standing. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Paul Ed, would you please come up again? Did you, uh, the question is, uh, what steps do we take to show some sensitivity to parking needs of the existing businesses that have been there for several years? Um, and I think that's, that's, those are some of the things that we look at when we plan an area. We looked at, well, what's, what's vacant in the area? And we have that municipal lot that does sit most of the time vacant. And part of that is it's, it's just not out the front door of a particular business. It's there, but people, you know, just by our nature, we don't like to walk uh, more than what we have to. And the new businesses that come in, they provided parking. And like I said, although I can't give you the exact, um, you know, the exact count, I know that the Highland House absolutely maximized that lot, um, probably even more so than um, what we maybe as staff would have recommended just because we like a little bit more green space. But we worked with the developer. Um, also, I've talked to a couple of the businesses on in Indiana, and we don't, right now, we don't stripe it. Uh, because we don't have meters, and we're not talking about putting meters up, but we could maybe look at striping parts of Indiana so that you maximize, so that you don't get people that are parking um, maybe a little bit off, and then they're taking up two spots instead of just one. So that's that's one way. Um, also looking at, you know, I don't know if that it would become parking, but it would at least help some of the homes that in there in that area working on that railroad corridor and putting in alleys where they should be. Um, so we have, this has been well thought out. Um, having parking problems is, you know, in, in the development world, it's a good thing. Central commercial also, I'll, 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 I'll end with this. We don't have parking requirements in that particular zone. It's, it's like downtown. You know, you have um, some parking lots that are provided by either the business or by the city, and that Indiana isn't any different than any other commercial district within the city. Hold on, Sarah. Suffice. Thank you. Uh, please hold on, Paulette. We've got some other lights. Uh, oh, President Burke, or Paulette, oh, yes, or not? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, obviously, you've got entertainment venues, uh, generally taverns, have a density of business many times at different hours than, for example, an insurance agency. <coughs> Excuse me. Would you say that the current mix of business, which has some retail, uh, certainly some residential, and uh, I guess as, as that corridor is developed, what seems to be now more development of hospitality-based kinds of venues. Would, uh, would you see there would be a potential to cap the hospitality venues? Because obviously, in terms of the amount of time people use parking, it's conditional upon the amount of time they spend, if you would, in, in a business. Uh, well, could you just define a little bit your vision for the mix of businesses, say, in Indiana, from the intersection perhaps till uh, t 12th Street or that general area? You know, it, it's hard to say. I know that when the Highland House was talking to the city about their development, they're not a 
2 a.m. business. They're a, a restaurant that has some you know, bar facility, but they don't stay open until 2. That's why they thought they wouldn't have necessarily that great of a conflict with the other taverns that are in the area in Indiana. Um, I don't, Mick will probably tell you that he hasn't determined the exact use of his building, so I can't tell you yet what his hours are, but that's why, you know, the Highland House seemed to work because we always looked at it as not being a conflict. Um, when the Indiana traffic starts to pick up, you know, it's usually, it's in the evening and later. It's probably 9, 10 or later. And um, sometimes, you know, even into the morning hours where the Highland House hours are different. Okay, thank you. Thank you, President Burke. Paulette, please hold. We've got two more lights. Automatic question for Paulette. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Um, did other businesses speak with you at City Plan offering critique uh, concern? And if so, did they find their concerns answered? Um, I spoke to probably, you know, I'm, and I'm trying to remember back. I would say two to three businesses. Uh, one was during the, the reconstruction of Commerce and 9th Street, and they had some concerns, but once Highland House developed their parking lot and the city's um, street, those street improvements were complete, um, that seemed to settle any concerns that they had. Another one we talked, just like I had mentioned before, about maybe striping Indiana in some sections to maximize parking. And then um, I think, you know, between Dave and then another business, I think we just have some unresolved issues on parking. But we, we have had a lot of conversations about parking, and um, as Mr. Anik mentioned, too, he's had meetings with Dave, and he's tried to resolve those. Please hold on. We have one more light. Alderman Ryan. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is not exactly any questions for Paulette here, even though I may come up with some as I'm rambling on. Thank you. Are we done with her? Yes. Thank, Thank you, Paulette. Um, Mr. Anik has not actually laid out exactly how many parking spaces are there, and he seems to have a good rapport with Mr. Rapinski, so possibly they could work together on maximizing parking in that location. In the meantime, I do believe we, as a council, there are parking problems down there. There's not enough parking spaces right now. Uh, if the area is going to be successful, and Indiana Avenue is going to be an entertainment corridor of the city, it's obvious that's the direction it's heading. That's the direction the city's pushing it with these developments. Um, I believe the city uh, wants Mr. Annex, uh, once his uh, architectural plans are there, I believe the city should do a parking study uh, in the area and possibly even before that uh, aggressively pursue the railroad into possibly making some more parking, uh, city parking in the area. Uh, we cannot delay Mr. Anik in his building of his project. We have to be uh, friendly to people that want to spend money in our community. And therefore, I think we should pass this resolution now. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Any more discussion? Alderman Clayunas. Yes. I call the question. Is there a second to that? All in favor, calling the question, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Please call the roll. And the motion, please read the motion. Uh, the motion is to um, accept and file the RO and pass the ordinance. Please. Warren. Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? No. Hannah? No. I'm sorry? Yes. Thank you. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Hi. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhasselt? Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Consent agenda uh, 21 1 to 2425. President Berg? Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I move that uh, we accept and file all the ROs, uh, accept and adopt all the RCs, and place the general ordinances upon their passage. Second. Motion and second to, to pass the consent agenda under discussion. Alderman Vanderweel, first. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to make some comments on 2425, mostly for the information of the uh, citizens. It's an RC by Public Protection and Safety. What we're doing is we're taking Cooper Avenue right in front of Cooper School from North 20th to North 22nd Street, and we're making that a one-way street going westbound. And the reason we're doing that is out of problem solving, working with the school, there was some incidents there. A child got hit by a car. We were trying to make it safer. And we listened to the parents of the school. The PTL came in and quite a few meetings of discussion with the parents, and we decided that this would be the best way to handle it. And the houses that were affected got a, got a letter notifying them right. 
And everybody that contacted the city <coughs> approved it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderbilt. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. Just want to, wanted to make comments, too, on documents 2416 through 2422, where the Public Works is recommending confirming the proposed assessments for the street resurfacing projects. Um, many of the same folks who were at the hearing came to the Public Works meeting as well. I, I just want to thank all those people who came there. The questions they asked were excellent. The discussion went very well. Um, we're very appreciative of their, all of their input. I just want to let them know that. And as the projects do progress now down the road, uh, if they have any other questions that they shouldn't hesitate to call us. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. I, I wouldn't make a comment before I call on Alderman Hannah. You're next, sir. Uh, on 24-16 through uh, 24 uh, actually 2020, right through the, uh, the uh, proposed assessments, people have expressed concern that perhaps the existing ordinance should be revisited, uh, and I would urge the council to do that. One particular resident asked that the, these resurfacing projects be delayed or be postponed. I've asked uh, Mr. Bill Balker, city engineer, he advised against that, but I would still ask the council to, that in the back of their mind keep, keep that thought that perhaps it's time to revisit our existency ordinance to see how we, how we par with the, uh, with the feelings of the community. Alderman Hanna, you're next. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and actually, the issue you brought up is what I'm going to bring up. I believe we need to delay the, uh, the process of resurfacing the streets. I believe the ordinance needs to be revisited. Um, I think there's some issues of fairness. Uh, I'm particularly concerned about people on limited income. Uh, even with our loan program and that sort of thing, I think it puts a great hardship on them. And there are other people that it seems that uh, it's the formula by which we charge them. They seem to be excessive. I, I, I hope that we can revisit that and uh, allay some of the concerns of the folks here in Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. There be no more discussion. Please, oh, one more. Alderman Manny. <laughs> Sorry, Mayor. It's um, okay. I wanted to pull those documents for a separate vote, 2416 through 22, which we're just talking about currently. 2416 through 24. The resurfacing 20. projects. Okay. And these are all the uh, proposed assessments. Correct. We will pull again 2416 through 2422 for a separate vote. After that vote occurs, and we'll vote on the balance of the consent agenda. Okay? May I comment then? Please do. Thank you. Uh, agreeing with both the mayor and Alderperson person Hannah, uh, there were wonderfully well uh, spoken issues raised about the current ordinance and its apparent. Uh, in some degree inequality, perhaps injustice, related to percentage citizen city pay in relationship to the percentage we charge people uh, for those who choose to pay over time, and also with the notification process by which we inform citizens of planned um, renovation of street surfaces. Um, I would believe that we would do better with the new ordinance, uh, tweaked uh, on the basis of um, these kinds of factors, and I think we could come up with a much more equitable system, and one that especially informs people three and four years down the line of the intent of council for probable uh, street improvements that would be coming. These kind of issues then impact those who buy properties, and they would impact uh, realtors, and we could require such information posted on the website, for instance, require notification so people don't buy a property and find out they have a $5,000 fee a year after purchase that's uh, going to be theirs to pay. So those kind of issues being real, I think, and worthy of merit of conversation, that I would then move to um, return um, these documents to Public Works, um, knowing or trusting that we can have a fairly quick conversation and have these back to Council, um, at least with much more breadth and clarity and respect of individual citizens and their needs and still be able to go ahead uh, with the, the planned resurfacing processes for this summer. Thank you. Okay. Motion and second. But you had, you had asked for a separate vote. You no longer want a separate vote. You're instead asking to refer that back to Public Works. 
correct? <clears throat> yes. OK. I want a separate vote if it's not referred back. Well, it automatically would. There automatically would be a separate vote to refer back. Okay. Uh, generally, when you want a, a separate vote, is if you're considering to vote nay, in, in, generally. In this case, if you want to refer it back, just make a motion to refer it back. There's a second. We'll ask for any discussion. I know I have three lights. I've got Alderman Meyer, Vanderwill, and Ryan. Any, anybody want to speak on the motion to refer back only? Alderman Meyer says no. Alderman Ryan says no. Alderman Vanderwill says yes. You're on. I, I guess before I, I vote to send it back, I would like to see how long this would delay the process. Because some of these areas are in my district. And for example, Lincoln Avenue, for five years, people have been begging me to get Lincoln Avenue resurfaced. And they were asking to move it ahead and move it ahead, and we finally did. So I, I don't want to stall the process, because I'm sure there's some people who don't want to pay what they need to pay on Lincoln Avenue, but it needs to be done. And, and I'm sure it needs to be done in all these areas. So before we vote, if I could just find out if there's going to be a delay. Uh, Mr. Bill Bolke, would you please step forward? You are uh, acting city engineer. There's no need for a motion. Thank you, Your Honor, and council people. The, uh, the process that we would have to go through if it went back to public work again uh, would be this week, and then back to council and if we could get some determination as to the policies that need to be changed. So it could come back to the next council meeting. Any uh, Alderman Vanderbilt follow up? Thank you, Your Honor. And there, there won't cause any delay in the process of getting these resurfaced? There might be some delay. It might go into September instead of ending before September. So it could delay a month or so. All right. Thank you. Please stay there. Alderman Susha for uh, Mr. Bill Balke or not? It's no? It's not right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Balke, most. Bill, please stay there. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have some concerns about uh, extending this project into September potentially because of the children going back to school. I don't think having road construction going on when they have to cross all those streets when they're going to school. I think that's a bad idea. And I think we need to caution the council on what we're doing here because I think we're potentially opening a can of worms if we start referring these documents back because now if we're successful in postponing and delaying and recreating how we're going to finance streets, ultimately you're going to dump it on the whole general tax levy and every taxpayer is going to wind up paying for this. And perhaps I bought my house at the end of a quiet street so I don't have to resurface my street. If you choose to buy a property on a busy street, that's a fact of life. And if we, if we start going down this slippery slope, the next thing we're going to see is we will have a galley full of people who don't want to pay to have their sidewalks redone. Um, I, bought a house, I needed to replace my sidewalk, it cost me almost $3,000. You know, I'm not walking my sidewalk, I don't really do much walking, but a lot of tourists do, a lot of local people walk down my street, so shouldn't that be fair then that the tax levy pay for the new sidewalk in front of my house? I mean, I think we have to be careful with what we're doing here, and I'm going to vote no to refer this back to committee because I think we need to move forward and get the project done before kids go back to school. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Meyer, question for Mr. Bulky. Thank you, Your Honor. I would just like to ask Mr. Bulky his opinion if we really should move forward on this tonight, and I value what, what you would say. I would say that we should move forward to have this project done before school starts. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Alderman Ryan for Mr. Bulky or not? No. Okay. No, we're done. Thank you, sir. Alderman Ryan? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in all fairness to the, the, the property owners on these, on these uh, streets that are coming up for resurfacing, uh, we used the same formula last year on a, a lot of streets that were resurfaced. And uh, is it fair to those people that had to pay this last year to all of a sudden this year kick it back? We must remember also, if we start uh, uh, debating this issue and it goes into next year, it's going to cost more next year to get it done than it does this year. It's a fact of, uh, a fact of life. Um, I do believe Alderman Manny has some, some valid points here. I do believe it does need to be looked at, you know, in certain areas uh, uh, to, for the, the fairness of the homeowner. And definitely, we need to have a long-term plan that people know 
uh, before they purchase the property, whether you know, uh, an assessment is going to be coming up for something such as this. Um, you know, uh, I don't, you know, we can't, we cannot start debating right now, you know, are we going to do it or not. Um, we have to, if we're going to get it done this summer, I believe it needs to be done. It's not going to be solved in one council session. Uh, it'll, you know, we're looking at, if we delay it now, we're looking at doing it next year. It'll cost more next year than this year. Thank you. Thank you. One thing that you also need to be uh, thinking about is that if, if you want to refer back to committee to look at interest rates, ratios, and assessments, and so forth, and you make a change, there's people that have already been assessed that are going to say, wait a minute, why did you do it for them and not for us? So it, it's, more of a, it's, it's a more complex issue than appears. So you may want to move forward, and then if you want to revisit, revisit and be thinking about the broader picture and how, how far you want to go back and retrospect into history or not, but then you're going to have to make that decision and wait for the phone calls. Any more discussion? Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, given this situation, the one we just addressed, the issue keeps coming up. Time is of the essence, and I would agree in that. However, now that we have this new information, I've heard from my fellow older persons that we could have an ordinance that isn't necessarily fair. I guess my question would be to City Attorney Steve McLean, how do we go about changing an ordinance without being insensitive to those that we've already maybe um, done the repaving before? Um, like I said, now we have this information and yet we're supposed to be maybe taking a blind eye to it because we have to hurry up and get it done. Um, is there, and, I, and I, I would like to be respectful too to the timeline here, but how do we go about doing this in the future and making changes without, you know, being insensitive to the people in the past? Any suggestions? Thank you, Alderman Serta. Attorney McLean? Uh, no, no magic bullets. I mean, you set policy and, uh, uh, you know, part of policy is trying to be consistent to various constituents. But at some point, uh, you know, there's certainly uh, rationale if, uh, if a policy should should change, you know, just because it, it applied last year and the year before doesn't necessarily mean it should apply forever, but uh, so I, I don't have a good solution to that. Um, you know, I, I've heard unfairness, but I don't know, frankly, you know, whether the policy is unfair. You know, you could do it a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, you're, you're trying to come up with enough money to resurface streets. You'd either, you know, take it all out of the general taxpayer, you could especially assess the whole thing to the abutting property owners, or what we've got is kind of a hybrid that has, it's not perfect, but it's, it's been sort of a balance over the, over the years. I think before you do adjust that balance, I think you should look at it long and hard and not, not expect to send it back to committee and have it come back at the next meeting for action. Uh, uh, for one thing, if you did change the assessment policy, I think you'd end up having to give all these people new notice as to what the new policy is. So uh, I agree with uh, what's been said that if, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do this, but if you delay it, I think you're probably talking about pushing this project back another season. Thank you, Attorney McLean. I'll uh, many second time. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, real world politics, compromise. I'd be happy to send it back and simply achieve these two goals cut the interest rate over time payment to 5% from 7 and give a year longer term for that payment. That to me would be helpful for our constituents and give us a longer time frame to revisit the larger issues involved as, as a City Attorney McLean's noting. That I think would be helpful, productive, and I think that would be uh, helpful for all involved. That is not uh, germane to the motion that's being posed. It has nothing to do with how much we're going to charge. It's just strictly uh, entering into the contract. Uh, actually, to uh, confirm the proposed assessments for, I think your your goal, Alderman, can be accomplished after this passes or not, and still ask Public Works to look into it. And if there's any changes that you want to make or that the committee decides to make, they could make it retroactively to this this group if they so desire, or from that point on. And again, as, as Attorney McLean has said, it will invoke notice. You're going to have to let people know. You just can decide to change the rules of the game tonight and hope that things go well. So it, it, it's, it's a little bit more complex than that. Uh, excuse me, Alderman, any follow-up? Just help me to understand, please. 
You're saying that the 5% and the time for, for payment mm -hmm. is not ordinance? But it's, it's not. The, the action that we're dealing with is a uh, RCs by Public Works recommending confirming the proposed assessments for resurfacing. Right. But not I am changing. My not changing. The, we're the not percentage and the time frame is of, in ordinance. Right now. Yeah. you want to comment anymore? If I could, Your Honor. Please. Uh, just to follow up, if the issue is percentage rate of the balance owing, uh, I think the council could adopt that after you pass this and before the bills are going to go out. These bills are not going to go out until after the work is done because you won't really know what the actual figures are for quite some time. If the council at some point changed what the interest rate was on uh, annual installments of assessments, you could do that going forward and still have that apply to these, I think, before the bills went out. Good, good point. Uh, Alderman Davis, sir? Uh, thank you, Honorable Mayor. Uh, I move for the question. Motion to uh, call the question. Is there a second? Oh. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Question has been called. We are going to vote on 2416 to 2422. The motion is to refer back to public works only. Please call the roll. Berg. No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Hannah? No. Kittleson? No. Clyunas? No. Manny? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Ryan? No. Susha? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhassel? No. And Boren? No. No eyes, 13 no's. Motion carries. We will go back to consent agenda from 24-1 to 24-25. And please call the roll. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Clyunas. Manny. Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Oren, Aye. and Berg. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2426 through 2428 to be referred. Report of officers 2429 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Bureau of Integrated Science Services of the Wisconsin DNR informing the Sheboygan Wastewater Treatment Facility that they were nominated for the 2007 Large Registered Laboratory of the Year. Uh, who wants to take that? Alderman Kittleson? Sure. Thank you. I uh, move that the RO be accepted and placed on file, please. Motion to accept and file. Is there a second? Motion second. Under discussion. I feel that we have so many outstanding people who work so tirelessly for the city of Sheboygan and this communication from the Wisconsin DNR um, only helps to reinforce that fact for me. Um, our hats have to go off to Dale Dorr, Al Zengler and their top-notch crew at the wastewater treatment plant for being nominated a second time for the Laboratory of the Year Award. I mean, this is a second nomination for them, and I know that there are over 260 registered labs within the state of Wisconsin, and some of those labs never get a nomination at all. And so uh, this is just really a huge, huge compliment. Um, we're so very proud of our guys out there at the wastewater treatment plant. We appreciate all of the work you do for the city, and uh, just keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Alderman Clavinus? Thank you. I just was going to say the congratulations as well. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Anyone else? Motion has been made to accept and file 2429. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2430 by the City Plan Commission recommending filing document submitting a request from the Town of Sheboygan for <coughs> water service to a municipal lift station located at 1100 Riverview Drive and denying the request. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 2431, we will hold for 2455. Please make that notation. 2432 lies over. 
2433 through 2452 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 2453 by Alderman Kittleson, amending the composition of the Tourism Advisory Committee to add a representative from the charter fishing industry. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second, under discussion. Okay. Um, we know that the, the charter fishing industry plays such a huge uh, role in helping to promote tourism in our city, and so we feel that representation from that industry should be uh, present on the committee as well. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And I would agree with that. Any more discussion? All those in favor of putting the resolution upon its passage, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2454 by Alderman Meyer. Authorizing the mayor to submit applications to Congressman Pete Trice and Senator Cole's office that will request a $1 million grant for the advancements of space science and education and technology. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I think this is wonderful if we can get a $1 million grant for this program. Just wanted to question if there's any matching funds required from the city. Actually, it's a grant uh, that is more of a partnership with the city. Of, I believe there's an organization in Green Bay. I, I forget the young lady that was here that did her presentation the last time mm -hmm. from Green Bay. It's more of a partnership. and an actual, We're not actually applying. We're, we're showing our support, more of a partnership. There will be some, some benefit to the city, but not in, the, in that respect. Thank you. Thank you. Any further? There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas, Manny, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 24, 20, uh, 2455 by Alderman Vanderweel authorizing the purchase an agent to enter into a contract for the purchase of a suburban truck less trade for the fire department. And we will take 2431 there. We do need suspension of the rules. Alderman Vanderwood. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for suspension of the rules. Second. There's a motion and second to suspend. Is there any objection? There is not. Please proceed. Then I will ask to uh, place the report of officer on file and pass the, uh, the resolution. 2455 and 2431 on yeah. the passage. Thank you. It's motion and second. Under discussion. Yeah. Alderman Manderwell. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the reason we asked for suspension was to, so that we can get a better price, and this item was budgeted. Thank you, Alderman Manderwell. Any more discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta aye. and Davis. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2456 by Alderman Graf, Hannah, Boring, Clayunas, and Susha authorizing the borrowing of $3 million and providing for the issuance and sale of general obligation promissory notes, series 2007A. Therefore, Alderman Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 2456 upon its passage under discussion. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2457 by Alderman Grau, Hannah, Boren, Clayunas, and Susha authorizing the borrowing of $4 million and providing for the issuance and sale of water utility revenue bonds, series 2007, therefore. Alderman Hannah. Mr. Mayor, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Serta, Davis, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2458 by Alderman Graf, Hannah, Clayunas, uh, Boren, 
Cuyunas and Sue shall authorize and redemption of a portion of the $4,200,000 general obligation promissory note, Series 200A, dated March 15, 2000. Alderman Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Cuyunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Burr, Serta, Davis, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2459 by Alderman Graff, Hannah, Bourne, Clayunas, and Susha authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. One more time, Alderman Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think first I need to ask for the rules to be suspended on this one. Uh, yes, we do. Okay. Uh, ask, make a motion to suspend. Yes. And there's a second. Any objection? Please continue. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There is a second. Second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clyunas? 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2460 by Alderman Susha, Clayunas, Montemayor, Kittleson, and Manny, accepting the agreement with Local 5011, Union of Profession, City Employees for the 2007-09. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion, motion and second. Under discussion. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to, again, thank everybody that was involved in the process. Settling these contracts early in the season is, is, is a huge accomplishment for the Salary and Grievance Committee as well as the Human Resource Department as well as the unions. The last time, um, I did forget to thank two people in particular, Judy Rudolph, who's the uh, Human Resource Secretary, and also Susan Hart from the Mayor's Office. I wanted to thank them because this was a true example of great teamwork by the current administration as well as working with the city employees, the unions, and it's good that everybody was willing to come to the table and get this accomplished. And once again, we were able to get this union up to a 10% contribution in their health plan uh, by the uh, January 1st, 2009. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, any further discussion? Please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Verhasselt, Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, and Manny. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 2461 through 2466 to be referred. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. On 2463, I'd like to, I'd like to move to file, please. Second. Motion and second to file. Under discussion. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Over the years, we've attempted other times to um, move things away from the voters and um, have it appointed, meet the qualifications and appointed. And we have heard repeatedly in the past, no, no, no. We want to keep our vote. Many times we've been through this. So I, I think even though maybe we should look at this, uh, I know the citizens do not want to lose their vote. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, basically, what this is is a, to do a, an investigation onto various forms of local government. Um, this is something that I think should be looked at. The, the reason that uh, uh, myself and, and Alderman Berg uh, have put this forward um, is to attempt to try to take some of the politics out of local decision making. Um, and, and to have decisions made more on, uh, on a basis of what makes sense rather than what uh, may get a vote that day or, or you know, what's, what's selling at that particular time. Uh, this is not aimed at being a, a uh, slap at any individual. Uh, this is nothing that will happen overnight. This is nothing that will probably happen for many, many years. But I think it's something that needs to be looked at. And therefore, I, I would vote not to file this. Thank you. Thank you. President Burt. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I don't know anything in the resolution that speaks of taking votes away. Simply put, it's a matter of looking at how, how do we govern alternative forms of government 
And there's nothing in there that suggests that de facto people will lose the right to vote. As a matter of fact, with some of the options, people gain rights to vote. For example, if you were to elect council people at large, rather than voting for two council people, you'd be voting for 16. So I think there are options that exist that allow us to, number one, look at how we govern and also preserve people's rights to vote. But we won't be able to make the determination until we take a look at it. Thank you, President Burke. Alderman Barr. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if, if the object of this is to take politics out of city government, that is absolutely foolish in my opinion. Uh, and, and why should you take politics out of city government? It's the American way. We have intelligent discussions and we decide on the issues. For example, if you have 16 aldermen and uh, the majority of those aldermen happen to be pro-union, and the city manager is working at the pleasure of the council, that city manager better toe the line with the wishes of the council or that person is gone. On the other hand, if you have a council that happens to be pro-taxpayer, and those are the directions that are given to the city manager, and that city manager, manager does not toe the line with that agenda, then that person is gone. So there is always going to be politics in city government, and I think it's just wishful thinking that politics is going to be taken out of city government. The other thing, a city manager, from what I understand, is going to demand a salary of probably a hundred to one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, and probably require a five-year contract. And as I mentioned before, if that city manager is not doing the wishes of the council at that time, and that city manager is asked to leave with a five-year contract after two years, in all likelihood you're going to be stuck with that, the remain, remainder of that contract for another three years, plus having to hire another individual. Also, I think the timing on this is very, very curious. I didn't hear anything about the city manager form of government uh, four years ago under the, pre under the, the previous mayor. Uh, I just think the timing is a little bit curious. We went through a recall last year that failed miserably, and to me this is another attempt to make life miserable for Mayor Perez for the remainder of his term. And whether you agree with the man or not, in my opinion, he's working hard, and if you don't like the job he's doing, then at least you'll have the opportunity to vote him out of office if he decides to run. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Warren. Alderman Verhessel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. When this idea popped up a few, few weeks ago, or actually probably two months ago, I think was when it actually started to surface, I took the opportunity to speak with Greg Buckley. He is the city manager up at Two Rivers, and I believe he's been in that post for 11 going on 12 years, and asked him about excuse me, the um, concept of whether politics were removed or, or still alive. And he assured me, he chuckled, that politics are alive and strong in his office, that it actually continues to be a growing matter. And oddly enough, he actually suggested, having the experience of been in that form of government for 12 years, he would see the strong value of having a mayor to actually handle the political side of it so that he could take care of the city's business as was originally intended. So it was an interesting perspective that he offered, having been in that form of government for so long. I share a lot of the concerns that have already been spoken of loss of rep representation. Um, here in the third, whereas speaking to the size and representation of the Common Council, after watching city politics here in the city of Sheboygan for the last three years, if it tells me anything, it tells me that we need broad representation. We don't need to narrow down the focus and concentrate the power in the hands of six, eight, 10, or 12 people. I like the 16-man council that we have right now. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hassel. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. In politics, I think we all know that everything is based on perception. And I, I think that the community is going to perceive this as looking into appointing a city manager. And it was proved with other elected officials that we looked at appointing or, or, or keeping them elected officials that the citizens just don't want that. I got many phone calls with other, when we were looking at that, and to me, they prove that they don't want us city official appointed. They, they want their vote. Thank, Thank you. Alderman Vanderbilt. Alderman Ryan, second time. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is not something to take away any votes. Uh, this is something to explore this possibility. That's all it is. 
Uh, a city manager earns $100,000 to $120,000 a year because that city manager has a minimum of a master's degree in municipal operations. That person does the day-to-day -day nuts and bolts operations of the city and oversees that. We still have a mayor that gets involved in the politics. We still have a mayor that gives direction. We still have a mayor that's voted in. That's a, that is one of the forms of having a city manager. This is not a slap at you, Mr. Mayor. This is nothing that would happen during your term, I guarantee you. This is something that needs to be looked into for the good of the city. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. It's interesting to get all of the perspectives, and I think it's helpful. Um, I can speak for myself personally. My perspective on this is that I commend Alderperson Berg and Ryan because what it's actually done in a time when we're always criticizing our department heads and asking them to be more efficient and turning over the rocks in their department to see if we can save some dollars, we're actually turning the tables on ourselves. I would not support this, this resolution if it did not include myself to be scrutinized and looked at the efficiencies as older persons if we need to limit our numbers. If it just had mentioned specifically looking at the office of the mayor, I would not be supporting this. Um, and at this time, it's just gaining information. And how nice would it be if it comes back and we find out, like Alderperson Verhassel said, that it's ineffective um, financially and what we're doing is a good, and we get a good report card. And that's why I'm supporting it. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I have to agree with Alderman Bourne that this, this appears, uh, the timing isn't right. It looks more like a political maneuver. Um, so I, I will be supporting to file it. I think that city government would function much better if everybody understood what their roles were. Aldermen are supposed to set policy, department heads implement policy, and the employees execute the policy. I think if it was more clearly defined and everybody stuck to the roles that we're supposed to be doing, I think government in Sheboygan would work much more efficiently. Um, and I think if we just straightened out some of those things, we'd be you know, doing even better than we are now. I think that the current administration works very well together, um, but I'm not gonna support this tonight in this shape. I think there is some merit to uh, reducing the number of aldermen in the future, and I think we should maybe uh, work with the county board and look at how their districts are going to shake out over time, and perhaps the city could implement something like that at a future date. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor, and I also agree with Alderman Bourne and Alderman uh, Vanderweel. I do not believe that creating a new position that our city has tapped already as far as our budget goes and to turn our mayor into a figurehead is not what the people of this city want. We have a very respected mayor who is a city manager, and I think that he has set a, a precedence, and I have a feeling that any mayor that comes after him will have to live up to what this mayor is currently doing. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Rehassel, second time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, one thing I love about the American form of government is that we have a pretty complex form of checks and balances in place. And locally, one of those checks and balances is the fact that if the citizenry did, does not like the way the city is moving, at any time we can vote out the mayor or the aldermen here in the city. So I just, again, I don't, I can't be interested in, I guess, the concept of removing that check and balance for our constituents. Thank you. Thank you, Hassel, President Berg. Oh, yes, thank you again, Your Honor. Point of clarification regarding has this ever come up in the previous administration. I believe it was five years ago that Alderman Schultz uh, suggested we explore alternative forms of government. It was perhaps as popular then as it is popular now because for some reason or other self-evaluation or self-examination always comes with some difficulty. Uh, it seems we're already bifurcating things between a mayor council form of government and a city manager form of government. That isn't necessarily so. Many communities use the form of a city administrator form of government. For example, Racine, they have an elected mayor who represents the will and interest of the people, who I believe Mayor Ar Arbogenian has spent the majority of his time working in the area of economic development. That's his expertise. That's an area where he uses the power of the mayor's office to move forward and try and connect and collect, uh, if you would, new resources for the uh, city of Racine, while the city administrator primarily spends the time running the day-to-day -day operation of the city. So I think there are alternatives out there, uh, as Alderman Van Hassel had said, that uh, you can have the availability to have an elected mayor who represents that will of the people, that ability to speak, 
and uh, go, go to the community and work in very well-defined and very broad areas and also have someone that operates on a daily basis the day-to-day -day infrastructure of the city. So the city administrator and mayor form is also a form that is very popular in the state of Wisconsin. But again, we won't know until we have the ability to take a considered look at that. Thank you, President Berg. Woman Reckie. Thank you, Your Honor. I think maybe we should go study the British form of government, go to a hierarchy of royalty and go to an elected prime minister. And You know, my constituents told me when we looked at making the city clerk an appointed role, no, they didn't want to lose that vote. That was very important to them. And tonight we're sitting here listening to people say, well, you know, we'll get ourselves a city manager that would know the nuts and bolts of the operation. And the politics would be left to the mayor. But the city administrator would know what's going on. So what's the next step going to be? Let's go out and hire ourselves 16 aldermen that know everything that's going on. We are a government by the people, for the people, and of the people. We elect the mayor to sit and run our city for us. If the mayor is not well in four years, we can send another mayor in his place. And that's what the people of this community want. They voice that opinion many times over, and I call the question. Is there a second to that call? Second. second. Un under discussion on calling? Oh, there is no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. There is a motion to file 2463. Please call the roll. <clears throat> Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. No. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Nay. No. Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. No. Kleunis. Aye. Manny. And Meyer. Aye. Nine eyes, four no's. Motion carries 2461 uh, through 2466, with the exception 2463 will be referred. Reporter committee is for 2467 by salary and grievances, recommending amending uh, for the calendar year 207, substitute general ordinance number 141 -97 -98 which adopted the revised City of Sheboygan Compensation Program for non-represented employees and passing the two attached ordinances. Alderman Susha. Thank you. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and that the subsequent ordinances be put upon their passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Warren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clyunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 6, 2468, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7353 based on non cooperation with the committee. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is Amanda Schindler Lex here this evening. She is not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Clyunis? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Montemayor aye. and Radke. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2469 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator's license number 7364 based on his non cooperation with the committee, the records of violations related to the license activities, his ineligibility, his status as a habitual law violator, and his failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Under discussion. The discussion is Benjamin Papendick here this evening. He's not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Is there any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ratke? Aye. And Ryan? 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2470 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 7403 based on his record of violations related to the license activity, his status as a habitual law violator, 
and his failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Ratke. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And Susha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committee is 7, 2471 by law and licensing. Recommending the nine be class B fermented malt beverage license and class C wine license number 2458 based on the applicant's re record of violations related to the license activity, her failure to report all, all violations, and the committee's standards for the issuance of licenses. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Under discussion, is Florinda Perez here this evening? Your Honor, I move to open the floor to Ms. Perez. Second. Is there a motion and second under, uh, under discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Perez, would you please step up? Go ahead. Good evening, council members. With all due respect to the council, I am requesting a liquor license for a restaurant I intend to operate on 13th and Michigan and Sheboygan. I have applied for a beer and wine license and was refused due to past incidents at El Paraiso Bar, which I operated over a year ago and is now closed. I take full responsibility for the incidents and citations that occur at that site. Unfortunately, I cannot undo them. But what I can do is not let this happen again in the future. I have learned a big lesson. Mr. Soul Mexican Restaurant will be a different kind of establishment. I opened the restaurant March 14 of 07. I am not into the bar business anymore. This restaurant is, a great, is in a great location, which it used to be uh, for Tejanos on 14th in Michigan. However, I need a liquor license to be successful. Without a license, I will have a slim chance of success. In the first three years that we were open, 60 people came to, the, to dine, and when they found out they were not able to have a before dinner drink, they walked out. I hold a liquor license for Mr. Soul, also in a uh, Mexican restaurant in Ozaki County in the village of Belgium. When I applied, they questioned me and investigated the prior incidents in the Sheboygan Bar. I explained them what had happened. They were willing to give me an opportunity to acquire a liquor license. I have had no incidents at the restaurant bar in Belgium that would rep jeopardize my license. I am asking you to please review my application at this time. I have lived and worked in Sheboygan for over 35 years and have raised my children here. They're all in college. I have letters from interest parties to support my intentions, which they were passed out to you earlier. I would like for you to review them at this time, if it's possible. I also have some pictures from the uh, restaurant that I opened. I remodeled it. I invested a lot of money in this place can I pass them to them? Sure. And if I would be most grateful if you could please consider my request for a liquor license. Thank you for your time. Uh, please hold on, uh, Ms. Perez. Alderman Ryan, do you have a question for her, sir? Or just a comment? Uh, it's a comment, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. 
Please. Oh, it's a comment on that. Okay, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm on the uh, law and licensing, uh, Your Honor, and uh, when Ms. Perez uh, put in her application for this establishment, uh, she inadvertently uh, left out some violations, uh, which we on the committee were well aware of because those violations had come before the very same committee not too long ago. Um, Ms. Perez has, or Ms. Uh, uh, Perez has, has invested a lot of, of, of her personal uh, money, her, herself, into this, this uh, venture. And I hate to see anybody that is trying to do something good uh, not be able to do that. Um, so I, I believe that we should give Ms. Perez a chance, uh, that we should give her a license. Um, with the past uh, violations that she had in town, um, I do believe that uh, uh, it should be issued uh, uh, initially as, if possible, a temporary license um, or issued under the uh, uh, understanding that any violations may result in a, uh, in a uh, termination of that license. Thank you. You would need to make a motion to that effect. Would you like to do that? Yes, Your Honor, I would. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Now we have a discussion. And we have uh, some lights. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have a motion all written out here, and I think the motion here, I, I'm going to read what I have here. Maybe Alderman Ryan would, would withdraw his motion at that point. What I would like to do with this, um, we're very well aware of Ms. Perez's violations. I've been sitting in the law and license committee for two years. She does have some unpaid fines that she owes to the city, so I want to see these paid before we even go any further with, with any of this. But I would make a motion, if I could, to refer this back to the Law and Licensing Committee of the new council and issue her a provisional license for 60 days if the clerk would agree to that, because that's solely at the discretion of the city clerk. And that would be the type of a probationary period where we could work with Ms. Perez and at least get her up and running and see what's going to happen there. Now, this is not a liquor license like she had at El Parisio. This is simply a Class B beer and a Class C wine license. And right now, there's really, I think we have one liquor license available. But I think this would be a fair compromise to just see if we are going to have any you know, further problems with, with this staff, you know, with, with Ms. Perez. It's a totally different type of establishment, and that's what I'm looking at here, and that's what I looked at in the committee. In the committee, I said this is not a, a bar as she had run before. This is a restaurant. It's a whole different type of venture. Restaurants, as Paulette said earlier, like with the Highland House, as a ten, they, don't, they don't stay up on 2 in the morning generally. They're usually closed by 10, 11 o'clock at the latest. So that would be if Alderman Ryan would uh, withdraw his motion, I would make the motion refer back to the committee. It sits there and held until the provisional license is... Uh, just about to expire law and licensing at that time would revisit the issue and, and issue you know, make the report of committee favorable or not favorable to the council at that point in time. Thank you. If I may add, may add, you can accomplish that with the motion tonight instead of running around back to the committee, bringing it back to the council. So that can be included in Alderman Ryan's motion if he desires to amend his. Yes, Your Honor, I will amend the motion uh, okay. to include or to uh, include uh, Alderman Bracky's. Uh, Recommendations. Oh, but not referring it back, you're saying? No, not referring okay. it back. Let's, uh... Okay. Are we clear on that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, excuse me, um, we can do this and issue the. Now, referring it back, we, you, Alderman Racky wanted to refer it back to the new law licensing committee, correct? Alderman Racky? And then the purpose of that was so the temporary could be issued and there would be a two-month time period between the temporary and the permanent as a, as a trial basis, I believe, which I don't think is a bad idea. Um, it will not interrupt Mrs. Perez's business, and it will be looked at at that point. Um, I don't, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's a, it's a uh, situation that we, you know, it is, it is a new committee, so. I don't know what, uh, what the answer is. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, what 
been proposed as a provisional license, which statute provides for that the city clerk can grant pending the decision by the council. Uh, really, it's not a temporary license. If you grant a license, that's a permanent license. Uh, so I think what uh, I'm hearing from both Alderman Ryan and Alderman Radke is uh, provide some mechanism for uh, like a probationary period. I think to do that, you really don't want to take action on the license uh, as a council. Uh, so uh, I think referring it back to the committee of the, either the current committee or the committee of the new council, I think would be appropriate. The provisional is good for 60 days, assuming the clerk is, is willing to grant that. Uh, but I think the council can't grant a provisional license or a temporary license. You grant a license that's good for a year. Uh, and I'm not sure if you're ready to do that at this point. Alderman Ryan, follow up. I uh, thank you, Your Honor. If, if it would be agreeable to the city clerk uh, to uh, grant the provisional license, which would be her, her responsibility and her decision, uh, I would uh, like to refer this back to committee in that case. Okay. Is there a second to that? Excuse Under discussion me. on the referral. Excuse Under me, Alderman. I'm sorry. Under Excuse discussion. me, Alderman Ryan. Are you to the new council or to the current council? To the new council. Thank you. I want you to refer back. Any more discussion? I see some lights. Alderman Vanderbilt, that you want to contribute to this? Please do. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm not sure where I'm going to stand with referring it back to committee because this is what I think we should do. I'm all for compromise and I'm also for second chances. And this is for a fermented malt beverage, malt beverage license and Class C wine license. So what I think we should do tonight is pass this. And if she has problems, we're going to find out about it. And we can pull her license any time. Or, or is it when we give it for a year? And I, I asked, do we give it for a year, then we can't pull it? I guess I would ask the city clerk that. Because I guess I was under the impression that we could pull it if there was a violation to her license. The, um, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the resolution that has been moved and second to, put upon, to be put upon as passer says to deny. So if, if you want to approve, that needs to be a separate motion, OK? You've done it before. But just so we're clear on that, the motion on the floor now was to accept and adopt. But then there was a subsequent motion made to refer back where we're at now is a motion to refer back only. Mm -hmm. If you don't want that referred back and you want to do what Alderman Vanderwill says, vote no. If you want to refer it back to committee to the new council, vote yes. If I could just ask, was, mm -hmm. was my theory right? <laughs> that <laughs> that about after you give it to the can you take it away or? Uh, Turn McLean. Council can revoke or suspend the license pursuant to pro due process. You know, once the license has been granted, then there, you can't just unilaterally take it away as you, uh, you would have to provide an opportunity for hearing and have a quasi-judicial hearing if, if uh, the applicant wished that. Uh, if you don't grant the license now and the clerk issues a probationary, then the difference would be uh, you wouldn't have to grant the license 60 days from now, and you wouldn't have to go through a hearing process. You could deny that unilaterally without uh, any right to a hearing. So, uh, but you're correct that if you granted it today, uh, you can take it back, but there's a, there's a process that you would have to go through in order to do that. Okay. Thank you. If I could just make one last sure. comment. Sure. Please continue. Thank you, Your Honor. The, the fact that she, that she has a license in Belgium speaks volumes to me. So I'm going to vote against referring it to committee because I would like to see us give her a license, give her a second chance, and I would hate to see us have a quasi judicial hearing and take her license away in the next year, but I'd like to give her that second chance that we, we don't have to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. On the motion, refer back only. I've got Alderman Montemayor blinking first. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm also going to vote no on referring it back because I do agree with Alderman Verhasselt that this letter from the village of Belgium 
city clerk saying that there's been no problems whatsoever means a lot to me. You meant Alderman Vanderwood. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next blinking light, Alderman Clayunas. I, I just had a question for Madam City Clerk if she had some difficulty managing this. Um, this would be any problem managing it from your point of view. Madam City Clerk. Um, in this motion, there still is a 60-day provisional license. I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. If because you have to, you know, you have, this is this RC is to deny the license. Now, if someone were to come in to get a provisional license from me that's authorized by state statute, I would not issue that based on the fact that the committee has now decided to deny, recommending denying to council. I would not feel comfortable leaving that word provisional in there if, in fact, the council is going to say something like a temporary or something. I have no jurisdiction over that. I have a jurisdiction over issuing a provisional based on a license that's being granted. If they're not to be granted, recommending not granting, I wouldn't issue a provisional, just plain and simple. I, that's my policy. I don't issue it. If I know there's issues coming to council, the council can ultimately decide to change the recommendation of the Law and Licensing Committee. But until that point, I would not issue a provisional. So provisional word in there causes me some concern. And it's procedure. The only way that Sue, uh, Madam City Clerk, could consider that, at least in my mind, would be to file 2471 and then let her proceed with that. On the motion to refer back to committee only, Alderman Lauren, there's a lot of lights blinking, so bear with me. We'll get to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, am I permitted to give, out, give some, as a member of Law and Licensing Committee, am I, uh, am I allowed to get some input on this matter right now? On, on the matter to refer back only. Uh, well, I want to give some input on the report that we got from Ass Assistant Attorney Chuck Adams and also Lieutenant Sheffhauser. Uh, whenever it's appropriate for me to do that, I'd, I'd like to speak to that. If, if this motion passes and gets referred, there won't be any need to talk. But if it doesn't, then we go back to the original motion to accept and adopt. All right. And that would be the, the appropriate time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We've got Alderman Hanna. And thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to vote against sending it back to committee. Um, the reference letter is actually quite impressive. And, and Father Boyd, who wrote from St. Mary's Parish, um, he was up here in Sheboygan for about 10 years. Um, so he's, I certainly respect his opinion. And I'm, I'm certain he doesn't, uh, does not write these letters uh, as a matter of course. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Ryan, you're next. Second time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think to Ms. Perez's uh, uh, good fortune here with the muddling of this council, I would uh, like to uh, vote against a temporary vote against uh, referring it back to the committee. And uh, I would uh, vote against denying the license uh, to uh, Mrs. Perez. And I think we should give her a license this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. One more. We have Alderman Radke on the motion to refer back to committee. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the reason I was looking at this motion was because we've had some difficulties in committee coming to a consensus, and we've come to the council floor tonight. And the reason I look at it this way was because concerns of Alderman Vanderweel, if we have to go to a quasi-judicial hearing, that does take time. That does cost the city money and things. I was just trying to find a more palatable way to try and... The consensus of this council looks like they want to just simply not re-refer it, which is fine by me. I voted originally in committee to uh, grant this license, and uh, I'm very comfortable with granting it tonight as, as a second chance because, again, as I said, it is simply a different type of establishment than what she's had previously. Thank you. Thank you. There are no more lights. On the motion to refer back to committee only. Please call the roll. May I ask a question, please? Madam City Clerk. The city 60 day provisional license, that's kind of out of the motion totally. Yes. Should I erase that? Yes. Thank you. This is to refer to law and licensing of the new council. Verhasselt? No. Boren? No. Berg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Hannah? No. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. Manny? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Ratke? No. Ryan? No. Susha no. and Vanderweel. No. 15 no's. Motion carries. Alderman Susha. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have a point of order question. Reports of committees, it's my understanding, are either voted up or they're voted down. There's no what, amending them. Is that correct? This is what, I would, what you need to do is move to file. And then uh, Madam City Clerk has the option to grant a provisional license. So if we move to file and then the vote is no, that's basically saying that we would support her getting the license or she would just, it doesn't matter what we do with this document, she needs to come back in and apply for so it. Vote to file means you're not denying, so it's still there. That's what I believe Madam City Clerk was saying, that if, if you pass this, then that's a signal to her that she can't issue that unless she's authorized by some state statute. Okay. Madam City Clerk, do you wish to speak? I think Alderman Radke is looking to say something. I think Alderman Radke is looking to say something. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I would implore the council to simply let's take the vote and deny this, this license, and then I'll make a motion to go the other direction with it because there is a little bit we have to add to that motion, which I know Alderman Bourne is getting at because I've got the sheet here. And uh, so if I would, I'd like to ask the council, let's just hold off, and uh, we'll make the motion to move forward on the, the granting. Thanks. Granting the license? I would ask that the council vote the denial. You need as to no. make a motion that ask. What is your motion? Well, we still have a motion on the floor to deny the license. So I'm asking the council to defeat that motion okay. with a no vote, and then I'll make the motion here with a few added things. <clears throat> Does everybody understand that? Okay, we've got lights blinking again. On the motion to accept and adopt and deny, that's the discussion. Alderman Bourne, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I think it now is appropriate for me to make a couple comments yes. on what was said in law and license. Uh, for me personally, in law and license, uh, to deny this license was, was not even a close call. And I, I uh, value the uh, opinion of uh, Deputy City, City Attorney Chuck Adams. And also I ask Lieutenant Sheffhauser from the Police Department, who sits in on all of our law and licensing uh, uh, committee meetings, as to what his opinion was, and he had grave reservations in uh, having this license granted. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the particular incident, but there was one incident uh, at her establishment that was, that he thought was you know, quite serious. Uh, maybe I should discuss it. Uh, there was a, a patron that was, uh, was carrying a concealed semi-automatic weapon, and I also believe uh, there was a cocaine bust in that, in that, in that situation. The other thing is the fines that she owes uh, amount to almost $1,600, and that to me shows irresponsibility, knowing that those fines are out there, and apparently making no, no attempt to pay these fines, or even making arrangements to get on a payment plan from these, for, for these fines. If that's happened since the last meeting, that maybe has happened, but it's my understanding when she came to the committee, these $1,600 in fines were not on a payment plan at all. So uh, in committee, it was not even a close call. However, with these, these letters that she's presented some not tonight, these reference letters uh, tend to uh, me to reconsider and give her a second chance. But uh, I, I just want the council to know that these violations were very, very serious. And there was a lot of concern both by the assistant city attorney and Lieutenant Sheffhauser, and I uh, value their opinion highly in these committee meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Susha, I'll, I'll get to the other lights in a minute. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just the point of order question that I brought up before I don't think has clearly been answered because it sounds like we're going to vote on the um, accepting and adopting of this report of committee. And if we choose not to accept it, I believe Alderman Radke plans on making a subsequent motion. And I'm just questioning if you can do that to report of committee because it's my understanding that they're not amendable. Uh, Colonel McLean, do you have a comment on that? Yes, I think it wouldn't be amending right. the report of committee. It would be voting the report of committee down. Thank and then you. you could make a new motion to grant the license. And okay, that's thank you. appropriate. If the subject matter is the license and uh, voting down the committee report then approving the license would be dramatic. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have two more lights. Alman Vanderwill on the motion. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we have dealt with 
with this individual before when I was in law licensing. I, I'm aware of, of what happened and, and I'm hoping that with this new restaurant that the, she'll have a different clientele and she can't get her license. I'm under the impression that she can't get her license unless she pays her fines. So we'll get the money and she'll get her license and she'll get a second chance. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to address the fines, I was going to ask City Attorney McLean. We have about sixteen hundred dollars in fines. And if I recall, payment plans are not acceptable for these types of uh, for this. This is you have to pay the thing in full. So even if we were to grant this license tonight, which we can do in the subsequent motion, she still would need to pay every nickel of these fines before that license could be granted by the clerk's office. By I believe that's part of the ordinance. Uh, so Attorney McLean might be able to answer that for me. Thank you. Thank you, Moretke. Attorney McLean, would you like to weigh in on that? Uh, I believe that's correct, although I do believe that, uh, and I don't think this code book is, is up to date on that. There, there was, uh, was some consideration put in uh, where the individual couldn't pay uh, the entire amount of the fine for, for some reason. That, uh, that was in our office's discretion to review that and come up with some payment plan. But uh, I guess absent some pretty strong evidence, and here obviously uh, the individual has a business, indicates that they spent substantial money in the business, I would presume there'd be sufficient dollars there, it's not an agency situation, to, uh, to pay off the fines before the license is granted. That's the standard language in the ordinance. Okay, thank you, Chair McLean. Alderman Recky, this is the follow-up. Second, second last time. Um, it is the policy of the committee when we do run into these situations, we send it off to council. We, we tell the writing committee as part of our motion that we'll grant this when these fines are paid. We, you know, just simply don't give them that option. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and I definitely am a person that believes in second chances, and this restaurant is not a little corner tavern where you're going to attract maybe people you don't want in a nice restaurant. Her food is delicious and I know that this restaurant with her running it is going to be a, a plus to our downtown. Thank you. On the motion to accept and adopt 2471. There is no more discussion. Please call the roll. And this will be to deny the license. If you and vote I yes, vote. she will be denied. If you vote no, then a subsequent motion can be made. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Berg? No. Serta? No. Davis? Aye. Hannah? No. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. Manny? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Ryan? No. Susha? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? No. Uh, two ayes, 13 noes. Motion fails. Holloman Recky. Thank you, Your Honor. Then I would make a motion to grant the license uh, to Clinton Perez. Second. Motion to second to grant. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Hold on. Berg? Aye. Serta? Davis? No. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 2472 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator's license number 7360 based on his non-cooperation with the committee as well as his record of violations related to the license activity. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion. Is Chad Pletz here this evening? He is not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Any more discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, Radke, Ryan, Susha, 
Vanderweel, aye. Verhasselt, aye. and Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 2473 through 2475 to be referred. Ordinances introduced 10, 2476 and 77 lies over. 2478 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2446 has been acted on. 2335, resolution number 2520607. By Alderman Monratti, Ryan, Boren, Berg, and Verhassel, authorizing officers and employees of the city of Sheboygan to sell fermented malt beverages, soda, and water on behalf of the Mayor's International Committee at Fountain Park on July 6, 2007, in the anticipated celebration of German Nights and a concert in the band Shell. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Can I take 2343 with it? Yes. Okay. And 2335, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. And then general ordinance number 2343, general ordinance number 91A, uh, that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. And there is a motion and second. Other discussion? Alderman Clayunas. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. In regard to general ordinance number 91A0607, this question has been raised why this was not uh, handled in park and forestry as well. Why this ordinance? Because they oversee parks, and this is an ordinance relating to um, activity in the park. Can anyone answer that question? Does any... Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. The reason it was handled in law and licensing is because when it comes to the uh, liquor licenses, beer, and things of that nature, that's strictly handled through there. And this is just to clean up the, some of the ordinances to uh, help the Mayor's International Committee out and make this just a little bit easier for other groups to participate. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman, I mean, Alderman Ratke. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if I may add here, just a little, it was a little side note. German Night was a was a, a, a festival that was already on the books. So German Night was taken for this because it's already there, and uh, the band that is going to be playing is known as the Britons. So we're going to have German Night with the Britons. Very interesting. <laughs> Pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. 2335 and 2343 to be put upon their passage. Please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2344, General Ordinance Number 92A0607 by Alderman Susha, Montemayor. Aye. Kittleson and Manny amending the code so as to delete one storekeeper at the Municipal Service Building and create a new position of, a, of storekeeper assistant janitor. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Davis. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Boren, Berg, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. 2479 will be referred to salary and grievances. 2480, an RC by public protection and safety recommend in filing document submitting a communication from the chief of police of the city of Plymouth expressing his concerns with the proposal to reduce the size of the IS department as it would be detrimental to their operations. Alderman uh, Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2481, a resolution by Alderman Meyer directing a public hearing regarding the change in the text of the zoning ordin ordinance ordinance to change the section of the use of required off-street parking areas. It's been a long night, a long day. Um, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Susha, do you have a comment? Not the next one. Next one. Uh, 2250, 
a call to the clerk's desk, 2250 RC number 4470607 by law and licensing recommending prohibiting elected city officials from seeking or accepting employment with the city within two years after leaving the elected office and passing the substitute ordinance. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, before a motion is made, I just wanted to get a clarification. I know that at the beginning of the council year, we adopted Robert's Rules of Order. And today, when I was going through Robert's Rules of Order, I did not find called to the clerk's desk anywhere in the Robert's Rule of Order. So I question, um, where do we find this motion? Will you direct that question to me or at me? Or? Either Madam City Clerk or City Attorney. If you could tell me where that is, I'd appreciate it. City Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this isn't a motion. This is a notice to the council that the matter is going to be brought up before the council. Uh, the appropriate motion, uh, once it's called to the clerk's desk, would be to uh, move that these documents be, uh, under Robert's rules, be discharged. Uh, that the Salary and Grievance Committee be discharged from further consideration of these documents uh, so that the council can take action on them. I believe that's the rationale for them being called to the clerk's desk. This has been, I, I've been city attorney for 20 years. This has been the process that the council has used. The council each year adopts the rules of the prior council. Uh, they don't necessarily adopt Robert's Rules of Order. They adopt the rules of the prior council which includes Robert's Rules of Order, but uh, uh, the call to the clerk's desk, as I indicated, is not a motion in, its, in and of itself. It's, uh, it provides in Robert's Rules that if, if it's noticed on the agenda, um, since the motion would change action already taken by the assembly, the assembly took action to refer these documents to salary and grievance. Then it requires a two-thirds vote or a majority vote when notice of the intent to make the motion has been given at a previous meeting or in the call of the present meeting. And I believe that's the intent of this is to give notice of uh, in the call of the present meeting that this matter is going to be coming up for action. Uh, so in my opinion, it would require a majority vote. The, the vote would have to be to remove these documents from the committee to the council. Then it would require separate action to do whatever the council would decide to do with, with the documents. I, I'm familiar with um, this charge of a committee. And I guess I just have a question. With the way it's worded on here, is this posted? Is this a legal notice? Is the way it's worded on here, is that legal? I believe so. Okay, so that's that's a definite yes. In my opinion, it is, yes. Okay, thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I had this called to the city clerk's desk because it was referred to salary and grievances. It was not put upon the agenda. Uh, therefore, that is why I did that, and I would like that voted on to bring into the council at this time. Uh, well, uh, we've got some lights. I'm going to... Uh, open the floor to two more aldermen, and then somebody needs to make a motion to discharge the committee. Okay, but let me let me just two more people, two more aldermen. Alderman Susha, you have another comment on that or not? No. Okay. Oh wait. Alderman Montemayor, did you have a um, comment? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. At salary and grievance, I guess this hasn't been addressed by us yet because we've been just a little busy with table of organization and the contracts, and I would imagine that's simply why it hasn't come through salary and grievance yet. Thank you. Okay, as you heard, call to the city's clerk was accomplished by an alderman, either calling the city clerk's office or city attorney's office. What you need to do is make a motion to discharge a committee's charge, pretty, pretty much, because this assembly referred it to salary and grievance. Apparently, the feeling is that salary and grievance is not acting on it uh, adequately in, in due time. Therefore, your choice is do you want to discharge the referral to salary and grievance? If you do, there needs to be a motion to the effect and a vote taken on that. 
President Burke. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I would move to discharge the Salary and Grievance Committee from consideration of this question. One or two questions? There's two of them there. Two questions. Both questions. The motion is to discharge Salary and Grievance from considering the referral that was made to them prior, uh, at a prior time but this, by this assembly, and the motion is on 2250 and 2257, and we have that under discussion. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would just like to elaborate a little more on what Alderperson Montemayor has said. The Salary and Grievance Committee has been exceptionally busy, especially at the beginning part of this year. Our top priority was getting the union contract settled. Another top priority is working on the reorganization chart, which has taken up a tremendous amount of our time. Um, we also made a promise to the police union to take up the issue of looking at HSA accounts and that came out through the negotiations. The Salary and Grievance Committee made, made a commitment to that union that we were going to look at that issue before the council year ended. That takes precedence over this document. The way this document is worded, it will apply to the aldermen that were on the council last year, it will apply to the aldermen that are here tonight, and it will apply to all the aldermen in the future. There is no sense of urgency for this to be pushed through. One of the other things um, that needs to be addressed in, in relationship to this document is also considering an anti-nepotism uh, policy within the city. We have over 10% of our city employees are related to each other. There's a huge problem with morale because of the favoritism that is shown to the relatives. And what I was planning on doing, and I've talked to the chairman of the Civil Service Commission, was I wanted to hold a joint meeting between Salary and Grievance and the Civil Service Commission so they could be in on some of these decisions. Because if you look at other communities, oftentimes when you look at the anti-nepotism policy um, and the way we hire our summer help, it, there's a lot of references to the Civil Service Commission. And I think when you're talking about the future of elected officials, that we need some input from the Civil Service Commission as well. Because it's, it's kind of a gray area. There's no clear-cut line in regards to the role of salary and grievance and the Civil Service Commission. So I'm going to vote no to calling this to the city clerk's desk because I think here again you're establishing a new precedence if you're going to pull documents out of committees. I believe it's only been there for two committee meetings because we had higher priority items that needed to be discussed. Our meetings have been running almost two hours and we hold them over the noon hour and we have to be sensitive to the aldermen that need to go back to their day jobs. So I would ask that you vote no, but in the event that it does pass and you choose to pull it back into this committee, um, I'll make a motion to refer it to Civil Service Commission because I feel that we're not done with this and there's no sense of urgency. Like I said, it applies to the aldermen last year, the ones sitting here today, and the ones that will be here next year. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Ryan? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This has nothing to do with nepotism. This has to do with cronyism, which is a different uh, type of uh, hiring process, I guess. Um, Alderperson Susha referred this to her Salary and Grievances Committee and then did not act on it. Um, this council will have a different makeup after the next meeting, I believe. We only have one more meeting of this council. Um, I called this, you know, basically when it was referred back to Salary and Grievances, I agreed with that because basically the only thing that needed to be done to this ordinance was to drop the word seek or seeking out of it. Um, everybody, I believe, understood that. And for it to go to salary and grievances and for that to happen, I did not have a problem with Therefore, I agreed to it. But it was, when it wasn't acted upon, it was not important enough for salary and grievances to act upon. I feel it is, and therefore, that's why I've called it here tonight, and I want this committee to act on it. Would you explain, Alderman, what you mean by cronyism? Uh, cronyism, Your Honor, is uh, uh, a form of... Uh, Hiring practices where people will run for a, uh, a uh, 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 public office, possibly with the hopes of being advanced into a full-time uh, position of, uh, of employment uh, that they may gain out of their time uh, being a public official. Uh, that is my entire uh, goal of this, is to not have a situation where we have people running for public office, which is basically volunteer work at the salaries that, uh, that we get paid. Uh, it's done, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a privilege to do it. Um, it's, a, uh, it's an honor to do it. It's, it's something that you do for, for the citizens. Uh, to take that 
and to convolute it into going from a elected position to a position of full-time employment that may have been gained through your time as an elected official, um, to tell you the truth, uh, it could result in nothing but, uh, but scandal, uh, loss of public trust, etc. It's been done once before, recently in this council. Uh, it's been done once by a former mayor who went from being a mayor to being the uh, uh, director of transit. Um, to tell you the truth, uh, I didn't come on board here to get a city job. And I don't intend to, and I would hope nobody else would. Therefore, I think this needs to be acted upon. We're here to serve as public servants. We're not here to get jabbed. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, when we make our decisions, we need the, the most information possible to make the right decision for the citizens of Sheboygan. And it's, from what I hear, it seems like the reason we're even discussing this right now is failure to communicate. And because of that, I'm going to send it back to the committee because I feel that if communication would have been done with the chair, that we wouldn't even be here right now. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Clay Unis. Thank you, Your Honor. I might be getting old and forgetting something, but I thought we did discuss this. And I can remember a vote on it. It was an even vote. And there were two of us for and two against, but I'm not sure if it was tabled because of that or whatever, but we did bring it up at our salary and grievance meeting. I don't know if it wasn't reflected in the minutes or what, but um, I don't know. But there, it was addressed. Thank you. Alderman Hanna. Hi. Thank you, Mayor. I think this, this bill, this motion here, has everything to do with public perception uh, that there are no conflicts. And I think it's very simple. Uh, I think the language is, is quite understandable. And I've gotten nothing but positive comments from my constituents uh, that we need to move ahead with this. Alderman Vanderbilt, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. Now I'm concerned. <laughs> when, when you have a tie vote in a committee, then it's stalled in committee. And basically, if you don't act on it, when you sign and die, then it just dies. So. I don't know what happened, why there was a tie vote, or where we're going with this. But if Alderman Susha could explain, that would be good. I do want to just weigh in a little bit. Uh, discharging a committee is a pretty drastic move. You're, you're setting a precedent that you're going to be referring to a committee, and when you feel like it, for whatever reason, you're going to yank it back. I certainly hope that Alderman Ryan is not implying that there's an alderman in this council now that is looking to get a job, and this is why the urgency is here to discharge a committee after the committee has already made an effort to look at it, and there was a tie vote because one person was absent, one alderman was absent. No one is denying their job as a committee. They've acted on them. And I need to point this out because I got calls today about rumors, and they made it clear to me that it was rumors that Alderman Susha was going to resign Sunday. When that didn't happen, that shot the rumor down. The next rumor that popped up, she's going to resign tonight before the meeting so that she can get a job at City Hall. That didn't happen tonight. I can guarantee you and the public that Alderman Susha will not get a job with the city while I'm here. This, to me, is an underhanded motion to deny a committee its right and responsibility simply because somebody believes that some alderman and the implication that's been made is going to get a job after, and I don't know if it's Alderman Berg, you won't be here. I don't know if Alderman Susha, I don't know which Alderman is going to be. I probably wouldn't hire you either, Alderman Berg. <laughs> the, the important thing is, is that while I can understand your anxiety and perhaps succumb into rumor, 
you need to understand the bigger picture, and that is let the committee do its job. The committee was asked, and it was referred to them to do their job. To yank it back in such a short period of time is a bold, dramatic move, and it undermines the whole structure of our standing committees. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I would just like to clarify, um, Elder Person Clayun is, is right. What she's recalling is the first time this came to committee, before I came back to the council floor, there were some amendments that were proposed and um, they died uh, tie vote 2-2. Then another motion was made and eventually it did pass and come back to the council. But then when it got to the council floor, um, it was realized that night that the way the document was written meant that nobody in the room could ever run for office again. So it was sent back to salary and grievance for more discussion. And during that time when it was in the committee, along with doing all of these other things on the plate of salary and grievance, I started doing more research into the matter because when I was talking to the League of Municipalities, all of a sudden the topic of Civil Service Commission came up and I looked up Civil Service Commission. And when you look into what they do, um, under rules and regulations, it says the Director of Human Resources shall assist the Civil Service Commissioners in adopting rules and regulations to secure the best public service for the city. Okay, so I called then the uh, chairman of the of this committee of the Civil Service Commission and I said, you know, does this fall in your ballpark? And he said, I'm not sure, but I'd like to discuss it with you and um, I'd like my committee to have the opportunity to discuss this as well. So that's why I'm saying that either this entire document should be sent over to Civil Service Commission because they're the ones that will be doing the interviewing and um, deciding who to hire and who not to or do a joint committee, a, a joint meeting between the two. Um, so I think that there's more information that came out uh, since the original vote, which was quite a while ago, and I think that this should be discussed um, a little bit further, and the recommendation should come back to council at a future date. And I have to agree with the mayor that I think this is very dangerous. If if we start pulling documents out of committees, you know, there are some things in uh, you know the planning commission that I'd love to vote on before I leave, but I know that's not proper procedure, so I'm going to leave them there. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Second time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I must clarify that this is approximately three months old. It's been bouncing around. This is nothing that came up because Alderman, Alderperson Susher, or Alderman Berg is going to get a job. Uh, this is something that Alderperson Susher referred back to salaries and grievances, um, decided not to act upon because they were too busy. It was already at salaries and grievances, and the only thing that was pointed out was that the word seeking probably needs to be taken out of it. When she referred it back to salary and grievances, I did not have a problem with that whatsoever because I figured they would take the word seeking out, bring it back through, it's done. For this to be passed upon, not put on the agenda two times, um, I do not believe any rumors, innuendos, et cetera, of people saying Alderperson Sushi is going to resign here or there. This is not why this was done. For, her, for, for this to not be acted on two times before the end of this council year, I found to be rather peculiar, put it that way, when everything else that went to that committee seemed to have been acted upon. It was already at that committee once. Um, I, uh, I must say that uh, the, a lack of communication um, probably in this council and, and your administration, sir, uh, is probably the cause of some misunderstandings here. But this was not brought forward by myself and Alderman Hanna originally um, to rectify any certain potential situation. It was brought forward to avoid any potential situations from ever occurring that could blemish this council or any future council like had been done in the past. That's why this was done. Um, to kick it back again, I think everybody here, uh, we know the word seeking needs to be taken out of it. It can pass tonight. It's here. We're discussing it. Salary and grievances had their opportunity two times to amend it. They didn't do it. Therefore, I still uh, think we should take the vote on whether to take it out of salary and grievances and back to the council. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Verhassel. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think Alderman Vanderweel hit it on the head here about 20 minutes ago, was that if there's an issue where you feel something's not moving through committee, it would behoove the alderman to contact that chair. As I was sitting here, I remembered an example actually between Alderman Vanderweel and myself where I had concerns on committee the whole item that I thought wasn't moving along, and I called him up and he explained where he had it set up in the agenda um, for future, future meetings. So I think that's the way things need to operate. Uh, number two, I'd like to point out there is a state statute that is actually in place already to protect against aldermen creating their own jobs while in office. So we do have that, but um, also my background would say is if the best person is somebody who was just left office six months ago, I'd like to have access to that person to hire that person. I don't want to have my hands tied and say that I have to wait a year and a half. So thanks. Thank you. Alderman Boren, you're next, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I originally signed on uh, this resolution with uh, Aldermans uh, Ryan, Berg, and Hannah. And when this was set, and I have to be honest, when this was set back, back to salary and grievances, I thought this was going to be taken care of and we were going to get it back the next meeting. This e easily could have went back to uh, also law and licensing. We had it in law and licensing. We could have went back to law and licensing, and I think it would have been taken care of the next meeting. Perhaps our agenda isn't quite as heavy. But, uh, you know, I was kind of disappointed to see that this wasn't uh, acted upon in an expedient manner for just a simple change. So I'm ready to move on and pass this. I think it's very important. Orman and Retke. Thank you, Your Honor. For point of clarification, this ordinance, so this has not been sitting here for three months. The original is dated February the 5th, 2007. Um, that's the original by Ryan and Hannah. Um, but... The point of the matter is, if there's more information from the Civil Service Commission that can be brought in, it should go there. Let salaries and grievances do their job. I'm proud of the fact that salaries and grievances have settled the union contracts out. When I came here two years ago, we were settling contracts that were about a year and a half old, I recall, at that time. We have our current contracts addressed. They're dealing with HSAs with the police union. Those are great items to de be dealing with, and they're great benefits for our employees. They've been very busy in those meetings, and again, any oversight or any problems with the committee chair? I'm a committee chairperson. If you've got a problem with my committee, come and talk to me. Ask me. Ask me why I'm not moving something if something's sitting there too long. But to just simply snatch it out of the committee and, and, and bring it you know, back to the council because it's been sitting there for three months when it really hasn't, hey, I'm sorry. Um, so the, what's the question right now? The motion is to call it to the clerk's desk? Yes. I'd like to call that question then. Thank you. I need a second for calling the question. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The question has been called. We will take a vote on 2250 <clears throat> and 2257 as being called to the clerk's desk, which means that if it passes, the council can uh, retrieve it from the committee that it referred to initially. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? No. Hannah? Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? No. Manny? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? No. Six ayes and nine noes. Motion fails. Alderman Susha, would you like to make a motion to refer back to a Civil Service Commission? Or it, it still sits in, yeah. it's, it's still, it still sits I'll in. I'll have a joint still. meeting with them. Okay, you can call them. Okay. All right, other matters, Attorney McLean. 2482 is a communication from Bernard Ahrens, 1415 School Avenue, fed up with the littering in his yard, allegedly coming from a nearby business. We re refer to public protection and safety. 2483 is a communication from Jack Aschenbach, 1719 North 20th Street, requesting that a two-hour sign be put in front of his house on the south side of his land. We refer to public protection and safety. 2484 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2007 and June 30, 2008. That will go to law and license. 2485 is a resolution authorizing the Finance Committee to study and report back to the Council on the potential use of a portion of the city's undedicated, unreserved fund balance. That will be referred to finance. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, we stand adjourned. <laughs>